Okay, now we got Sullivan. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Village of Marinick, January 23rd, 2023 work session. Uh, I need a motion to open this meeting. Make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, what we're going to do, since we have employees here and we have uh, other folks who are interested in particular uh, uh, items on the board, we're going to start with uh, dealing with the issue that our employees are here for so that they can get home from, for dinner and not have their loved ones mad. Okay. Uh, so, Jerry, let, let's talk about. Uh, we are here tonight to talk about with, with our employees. 2C, Mayor. 2C. 2C is budget transfers for mid year salary adjustment for January 23rd, 2023. Now, I, let me give an overview of this, Jerry. I, I believe that this is the uh, administration's view that certain employees and certain uh, department heads uh, were not receiving uh, pay commensurate with their title and that other. Other uh, municipalities were given out. So they're trying to be more equitable and to uh, keep our staff happy and to keep our staff here working in the village of America. That's correct. So, so very recently. Is that Me? Yeah. This one's good? That's fine. So um, very recently, the town of Mamaroneck um, uh, spearheaded a <coughs> compensation um, um, analysis. Uh, for their needs, and uh, we were able to uh, take advantage of that as well because they were able to share that information since we participated. Um, but at the, at the board's request, uh, we completed mid-year reviews, and we looked at um, we looked at certain items in in every department's budget, uh, and where there were some shortfalls, and where there were some issues, and where there were some potential areas for increased revenue as well as. Um, some other items. We've had a great year so far. Um, as everyone knows up, up at the dais that our audit was, was outstanding. Um, this year we received the GFO award for um, our excellent budget presentation. We've also had um, a bond rating increase, uh, the first increase since I've been here. Um, and next Monday we will, go, we will be discussing the capital plan um, and um, this year, the, uh, the, the staff and department heads are going to be working on a five-year operational plan, uh, which is something that uh, the Comptroller's Office, as well as some Board of Trustee members, have been asking for for a while now. So a couple of uh, items here, and I'll just go over them in broad strokes. Um, there were a couple of items um, in 1230 in the manager's department. Um, Mr. Sarnoff, who has been here a significant amount of time. Um, has achieved the title of deputy village manager. Um, in, um, in my staff, uh, there was inadvertently uh, an increase left off of the um, 2020, 2022 budget uh, in the adopted budget. Um, HR, there's been some significant changes in the HR department. Uh, we've increased staff at the HR department. But with me, uh, the way it works, when you ask for increased staff, you get increased responsibilities and work. And there's been some significant um, increase in work um, in the HR department. Um, one of the items was the um, issue that we had to go through with unemployment fraud. We had um, many employees, myself included, that were um, impacted by um, unemployment fraud. And if it wasn't for our HR director and her staff, we wouldn't have known about it and the village would have been paying out. And just let me be clear that that is somebody uh, fraudulently using your information, not you committing right. unemployment fraud. Right. And it put a lot of us uh, in excess of two dozen employees um, in a very difficult situation where we had to freeze our credit and all of that stuff. But it wasn't, it wasn't for the HR department. And the fact that they now have a larger staff where they can catch things like this uh, we would have been um, we would have been in, in, in big trouble. Uh, as you know, in, in DPW, we had the retirement of a longtime general foreman, and uh, we advanced a, an individual who was not uh, the assistant general foreman, but in fact a heavy motor equipment operator. So that's the change in that area. Uh, central data. We've had uh, uh, last year um, we had an idle, idle title pay for our IT manager, uh, which was never 
um, which was never resolved, as well as um, a police IT um, um, reassignment uh, because we have someone um, rededicated to police IT and the fact that there's body cameras and servers and all of that uh, going forward. Uh, we've designated a, a buildings project manager here in the village. Uh, everyone knows who that is. It's very important for us. Um, and I do have to say that when it comes to the Marine Education Center, the naturalist and I have been working on a plan um, to realize additional money, additional revenue, as well as um, to push out to the community, mostly school kids and, and uh, kids of that age, um, more programs that, uh, that she is able to produce. So there's only a slight uh, funding need there. And I just then, want to point out that the uh, naturalist uh, performed a rescue today on a, on, a, on a goose whose life was in danger. And the goose successfully flew away and lives happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> Son to be proud of. How does he know and I don't know? Oh, I think that's yeah. why. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a great piece of video. It's a great piece of video. It's great. The goose is not, not fertilizing Columbus Park. <laughs> and then and then there's a couple of um, um, part-time staff members that we were able to um, to include. Uh, one of them was a um, uh, one being paid out of contract services. Um, she has uh, fit in extremely well and is helping the boards. Um, address a lot of their needs, the, the land use boards. So she is now a permanent part-timer uh, and is not interested in full-time. She wants to stay part-time. So that's the rundown of uh, 2C. Okay. Uh, any questions or concerns from the board? Uh, these uh, these numbers, uh, how did you arrive at these numbers, these increases? Uh, these were based on, I think I had sent you guys the compensation uh, survey um, maybe last week or the week before. All the weeks run into the same to me. Um, it was uh, it was that plus it was also a commitment from the uh, from the individual department head to focus more on on the revenue side, which is uh, a big deal and a big focus in this year's budget. I will see in a couple of months. Anybody else? Well, I can say this from being here a number of years, uh, from being involved in village government uh, from the turn of the century, uh, we have one of the best uh, management groups that I've seen. Uh, they are energetic and talented and uh, uh, improvise. And, uh, you know, we, we as, as you know, it, I can't help but relate a lot of life to baseball. And uh, we have uh, a good team and a good farm team after them. And uh, that is important when you're running a government like this. And uh, when, when you have people that are performing and are doing well, uh, you need to appreciate them and reward them. And we need to keep them. We need to keep them, yeah. So uh, I'm fine with these. And uh, okay. I wish those employees well in the future, and uh, I expect them to be here long after I'm gone. When I leave the office, not, not gone, gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody knows. I hope you're retired when I'm gone. <laughs> Anyone else? Everybody fine putting this on the regular agenda tonight? Yes. Tonight. Tonight. It's on, it's, it's on the regular agenda now. But okay. just, all right. I'm just surprised we're, that I'm surprised that we're putting it on the regular agenda. You can you know, typically things on the work session and then it goes on for two weeks. And and I, I'm sorry that I missed the beginning. I had I had something I'd forgotten. Um, but I'm you know I'm concerned that we're entering into a budget season. We're committing ourselves to a much higher series of salaries, and we haven't done you know we're, we're about to start the budget season, um, and we're yet, yet taking more money out of our reserve fund to do this. I'm just, those are my, those are just no, no, the no, concerns. It, 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 that's, that, that seems like a reasonable uh, concern. I mean, uh, I don't see anything here that concerns me. Um, uh, it, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me to, to put it on in two weeks. And uh, so we can, we can at least look at it and, uh, and uh, just uh, see if there's an issue. Do you, do you think, you guys thoroughly 
thought this through apparently and oh and God. and what um are keeping in mind our budget for next year which oh i'm so sorry i was absolutely just... um leilani that falls on me i wouldn't put this on the agenda if i didn't think that we could handle it in next year's budget does it uh, does it need to go tonight or 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 would uh, it's listed on for tonight okay whatever the board decides I mean, uh, uh, it's usually the uh, practice to, to do it two, two weeks. Uh, two weeks, and if it's the practice, then. Jerry, is, is there a reason that it was put on for tonight? Well, some of these items are are, are budgetary items where, um, you know, if we don't do it tonight and we do it in two weeks, that's not going to break the bank, but it's on for tonight. So that's how we wanted to list it. Well, if people are expecting, <laughs> it's a different from expectation. And I mean, I understand we usually did it, but I'm, I'm fine for doing it tonight. There's, there's, there's a lot of times we make exceptions depending upon the situation. To me, it's not as, it, it doesn't matter whether it's this week or, but if there, if it's a concern for everybody, then two weeks, not at some point. All right. So, uh, but but and I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> to keep in mind, because I'm I I do like consistency. <laughs> so if we if it's either this is how we're going to do things moving forward. If something is in a work session and we wait two weeks to put it in the um, well, just there, in terms of being consistent. Th there are sometimes though that the, the staff has uh, items that are pressing and it have to be Move dealt forward. with you know expeditiously. We have to we have to be flexible sometimes, but it yeah. seems like something that can wait two weeks. If there's an issue with anything, this is the time to talk about. It. If there isn't an issue, then it would be great to have this issue resolved with the department heads, because they have to spend two weeks with uncertainty. So, I mean, it's it's really up to you guys. It depends on what you want to do. But for practically three quarters of last year, we had a budget. We had an item listed on a work session and then on a regular session. And then towards the end, we kind of changed that where we wait for two weeks. So I'm not sure whatever, whatever the board wants to do, I'm okay with, that's fine. This was what, this was a very important item. We put it on here and I get an opportunity to, to discuss it. What do you think, Manny? I, I don't believe, I don't, I think we should put it on for tonight. It's already on for tonight. I don't know what in two weeks we're gonna investigate or more information that's gonna come out Two weeks that we don't know now. Mm -hmm. Of course, we, we we you never know what you don't know. So. Yes, <laughs> so I just don't see the point in it. So, so, uh, so uh, uh, yeah, I'm 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 fine with the consensus of the board. But uh, yeah. I but, understand like we don't like it to kind of be like oh it's dropped and we kind of have to make a decision. But I know I understand sometimes things take time and we need to be a little flexible sometime, but not all the time. And I'm fine with tonight, Lilani. Can I go? Yeah, that's, that, that doesn't work. Oh, okay then. Uh, <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> for me, no. Um, <laughs> I will go for tonight. All right, okay. we'll do it tonight, and uh, you know, in the future, just please try and you know take that into consideration. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night. It's coming. <laughs> Get home safe. Hey, look, look. Well, look, they, look, are they going to come back? You got to coming back at eight o'clock or in the parking lot. Are you are you, are you coming back with the windows? Uh, yeah. I wasn't. Oh, okay. Okay. Is it? Yeah. Well, well, apparently they want you back. So, so <laughs> talk. Can do, are we going to get to it? The windows are on at the very end of the work session. And Jeff's here. Mm -hmm. Sit down. So, <laughs> <laughs> but we, we're just going to do, uh, we, because there are folks here. Yeah. yeah. For item. Uh, Thank you. Extending the C2 zone into the Hunter Tier parking lot. Uh, I put this on the agenda. Mm -hmm. And there are folks here to talk about it. Later on, we have folks coming from the budget committee to talk and roll out on to uh, uh, everybody knows the hunt a lot across the street. It was built in the eighties uh, as as the that was going to be the uh, the thing that cured the village of Mimarek's parking problem. Uh, it was a good idea, but you know, obviously, it didn't cure the village of Mimarek's parking problem. And it's been falling apart 
I'd say since the early 2000s. Slowly but surely, you can see the rust coming through the concrete. Uh, we've had to repair stairs that were unusable. Uh, there's uh, water that drips through uh, the center of the lot onto cars underneath. So it's just been, you know, it, it wasn't built that great and now it's well past its uh, expect, expected life. So the village has very few opportunities to provide land for affordable housing. Uh, I don't think the village should be a developer of affordable housing, but I think what we can do is rezone that and uh, allow a developer to come in and build affordable housing and a parking lot, affordable housing obviously over the parking lot and give us back uh, parking and also provide affordable housing for the people in this community uh, who really need it. You know, the, and I just wanna talk about affordable housing uh, for a minute or two because affordable housing is uh, very misunderstood in this country and especially in the suburbs. Uh, affordable housing is not public projects and you know, uh, that, that carries a connotation that is unfair too, but it's a connotation that I'm not gonna cure tonight. Uh, affordable housing is about having working people have an opportunity to remain in a community, a lot of times where they grew up, uh, where they went to school, where they work. Uh, you know, when we have developers come in, and they build, you know, whatever, 20 units. And under our law, they have to build two affordable units. They're building those affordable units at the 80% level. It means 80% of the median income. And that is nice, but it's still a, a large uh, income. You know, it's not catching the people who are making $50,000. It's not catching the people who are making $40,000. Uh, it, it's not catching the people who work in grocery stores. It's not cat catching the people who work you know, uh, delivering food or, you know, our, our, our new DPW workers who come in and, uh, you know, taxi cab uh, operators, delivery operators, truck drivers, they can't afford that 80% rate. And these are the people who during COVID, we were all singing their praises about they were heroes and they saved us all and they did. But you know what, <laughs> you can't just need somebody during an emergency and then tell them, ah, you'll get by afterwards. And you know, in this community, we talk about honoring our diversity. And we are a very diverse community. Uh, out of all the communities around here, we might be the most diverse. But that just doesn't happen by serendipity. Uh, we have to make sure that we remain a socioeconomically diverse community. We remain a racially diverse community. And this is where government could put their finger on the scale. Uh, because if we don't put our finger on the scale, it's not gonna happen. And we can see this happening all over the community. You know, the, the, the building that's gone on in the past 25, 30 years, uh, and this is not a knock on the people who moved into, the, into those buildings. Some of them are sitting here tonight and they're good people and they've made good citizens, but it, it, it isn't affordable <laughs> to the vast majority of people who grew up here, whose families grew up here, uh, who do the hard labor of keeping this community going. Uh, you know, so many of us, uh, you know, were able to shelter in place uh, during the, you know, the, the bad days of COVID because other people were out there, you know, delivering groceries and you know, bringing stuff to your door and the Amazon guy and the UPS uh, lady, and you know, just so, what I believe, and I grew up in affordable housing in New York City. Uh, the housing was built by the International Ladies Garment Workers Union. John Kennedy came and dedicated it in 1962. And there's a picture of me on my father's shoulders. I was one years old. And we're listening to John. I don't know if I was listening. They were listening <laughs> to John Kennedy make a little speech when he dedicated this. But somewhere between those 61 years, you know, we lost sight of, you know, our job is to make it a more equitable society. 
Uh, and that doesn't mean that everybody ends in the same place. The outcome is the outcome. But what we have to do is give everybody a chance. Everybody needs a chance to succeed. If you're spending 60, 70% of your income on rent, you cannot save for your kid's college. A flat tire is a major emergency. You know, and then you know, you're raising kids here and you know, they want to join Little League. They want to join uh, you know, uh, soccer. Fleets are you know, something that you're going to have to, you're going to have to decide what they don't get because they're getting fleets. And for a lot of us, that is in, in our, you know, our, our daily life. But for a lot of people in this community, it is. We have a lot of people who are living at and below the poverty line. And all they want is a chance at a better life. And I believe that we can at least begin to help them and help ourselves because I truly and honestly believe that we don't all do well unless we all do well. You know, it, it, it can't keep going like this because that, that, that's the, the way to follow it. You know, the, the, the inequities that we see in our society today. So I believe very strongly in trying to do something to, as I said, put the government's uh, finger on a scale to help those who need a hand uh, remain in this community and have an opportunity <laughs> at success. So that's why I'm proposing this. And Bob, I gotta ask you something. Would this be a redrawing, a map redraw or a whole, I mean, how, what, what's the process to do something like this? You could do it either way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my, my understanding- It's not like- Start from the beginning. My understanding is that the zoning that's in the adjacent C1 is fine for this purpose. Mm -hmm. and so just to draw a map. Map revision, they call it. And how does that work? It's a little to thing. We adopt the new map. So we require... we're not changing the, the, the verbiage of the code. Right. Mm -hmm. well, except to the extent you're saying adopting a map dated such and such. Right, right. Right. But it may require uh, seeker analysis. We're going to have to have our planners look at that. Okay. Um, but that's it. Okay. But it was basically speak. extending a current zoning to an adjacent person. Correct. Right. So the, the, the little apartment building over there is zone C2. Yeah. So it's just, we're, do, we're doing a, when, like when Donald Trump maps the hurricane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not using the show. We're not using the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. that, that's what I want to endeavor to do as a community. Uh, wasn't this a proposal also for part of the um, new village hall? Isn't that, that's, that's that we'd already talked about doing this as part of the new village hall. It's in the comp plan. Too. It, it, it was a thing you called. Yeah. Well, it's in the comp plan, so it's not, yeah. it, that that makes it easier to do. There was, uh, there was um, uh, something called the, that uh, called Civic Center uh -huh. that we were going to um, do C2 all around this building. That would include a uh, hundred tiers. So my question is, uh, is it wise just to do one part of it? Why not do all of it at once? Uh, uh, so, so that's that's the only the only uh, concern I have is that we're picking one part of it when we could do it. We could do it all, right? I think the only question is, would that require a more substantial secret analysis? Yeah. Ah, I see. That is going to delay this, and if you want to wait and do it together, or yeah, we don't want so to do this. Is there, is there, but if we know we're, if we're contemplating both and we don't do it together, is that improperly segmented? Well, why, why would we have to change the zoning here? I don't know that you do. Yeah, uh, I haven't studied it, but Laura's correct to raise. I was about to raise the what's called the segmentation issue. Yeah, uh, but based on my understanding, your consideration of. Uh, rebuilding here and, and, and developing this parcel for a civic center is probably not advanced to the point where doing one rather than the other would be considered a segmentation. You're still in the contemplation stage here. You haven't really, you haven't really committed <clears throat> to anything. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so what, what I'm actually asking the board to consider is a map revision for the Hunter lot, right? And then the next step would be to do an RFP for a, a, a person who would, a person or, or an entity that would develop an all affordable 
building. Because mm -hmm. this only works for me if it's all affordable. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have the, we have the lot there, though. So the lot gets rebuilt? Yeah, stays. I want to put the lot on the bottom, build it on the top. The yeah. Uh, but presumably, I guess, uh, fixing the, the, the existing parking would be part of the deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you have to fix it. Yeah. But you know, we put up the RFP and see what comes back. Mm -hmm. Is everybody fine with moving forward on this? I am. I am. I, you know, my, one question. What's the timeline on this? What's the timeline of changing the zoning and then submitting the RFP? Well, I think the first unknown is how much secret analysis we'd have to do here. I suspect it's not an enormous amount. My guess is this would probably be ready for you to act on no later than March. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the village manager could at the same time, depending on everything else, on the plate, develop an RFP. And, uh, and put that out as soon as you would change the zone. He'd have no problem. No, <laughs> it's quicker if someone else has developed an RFP. We typically borrow other people. Yeah, that's right. We're not reinventing the real No, not on this one, no. Great. All right. But we have to do the rezoning before. Yeah, we can't have somebody, can't have somebody yeah. bid on something that's yeah. a that's that's zoning that's in compliance. Yeah. Right. yeah. All right. So, so can we have on the next? Uh, Work session, uh, a, uh, a a rezoning map. Jerry, we can. That's a Jerry. That's a Jerry question. <laughs> a AKR question. Yeah, so we can get that for February thirteenth. Thirteenth. Yeah. It's actually three weeks, not two weeks. Yeah, yeah. I think we can. Yeah, and I haven't asked them, but I can tell them to do it. Okay. I don't have to ask. <laughs> So we're good. It sounds like the magic words. Okay. Well, that's the, the first. What is that? The journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. Oh, you know stuff like that. I don't just, know. I, 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 <laughs> just, it's actually, I, I get myself in trouble. It's Chairman Mao. <laughs> oh, oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. Great. Right. Started with uh, so thank you all. And uh, that's. Couple of things off the agenda already. This. Good job. Now, just to get, <laughs> I, and just in the audience tonight is uh, a lot of the good people from the Mar Marinac Affordable Coalition for Affordable Housing. Coalition for Affordable Housing. And uh, thank you all for your advocacy and for your 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 your, your work and your hope. Thank you. And and this this, this would be a substantial uh, could be it could be a substantial project. Yes. Monumentous well, in our community and yeah. in the surrounding it can be the extra story. The we, loop, could, we could be when we rezoned, we gave a bonus story if the building is 100% affordable. affordable yep. mm -hmm. So, this would it's time to use that, that category. I mean, and I, I will say that in all the, I mean, I know we had the pandemic, so mm -hmm. we can't say what happened in the last three years was normal, yeah. but. The rezoning that we did has yielded, I think, one affordable unit, and it's mm -hmm. about to yield two one more. Two more. Two more. Yeah. On on right on. It'll right. be three total. Wow. When that that's, when that uh, place is done, yeah. That, and they're a at a high, and they're a very high, you know, very it's high rate. Rate to get into it. Yeah. And this this could be as uh, as many as a hundred, right? I don't think it's going to be hundred. No. no. Well, it's really a small units. <laughs> Well, let's see. I want 100. <laughs> <laughs> a 12 story building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be uh, Okay. Thank you. And then next up, we're, we're going to skip down to the windows on the windows seven. on Stanley Avenue. Second to last. Oh, because we have our, uh, our head of uh, parks, who actually is now doubling as chair. What is he going to do now? A building uh, project manager. Building project manager. Cheers. He brought that upon himself. You're there. coming along nicely, kid. Yeah. Wow, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you, folks. Good night, Mike. Thank you. God bless. Yeah. 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 Jeff, your time to shine, pal. <laughs> you can go up to the mic. Break the good news tonight. <laughs> the good news. 
This, this is Jeff on the uh, superintendent of uh, Fox. So we put into the capital projects uh, window replacement on one of the village's historic buildings, 234 Stanley Avenue, which currently houses the counseling center, counseling center for uh, youth groups uh, for, I believe it's the village of Marinac, town of Marinac and Larchmont. Yeah. I believe it's a tri municipality agreement. Um, currently the windows have inch, inch and a half size holes in them that allow water to penetrate the building and create mold and mildew issues with plaster inside. Uh, since Ida, the building has been flooded out. Uh, we've recently fixed all that damage that has uh, occurred during Ida. And with the windows still having holes in them and leaking, we're starting to see some of that damage come back, which isn't a very good working environment for the doctors mm -hmm. and the children who visit the center. Mm -hmm. um, we got a couple mm -hmm. estimates to replace windows. Um, the thing about this building is it is designated historical. So we can't just go in and go to Home Depot and buy vinyl replacement windows and replace the windows. Um, not only that, the windows are various sizes. Even if we did do vinyl windows, we still would have to get custom window for each window unit. Nothing is a standard size in the building. Um, I came across a company out of Brooklyn who deals with historical window replacements. Uh, what this entails is they actually leave the old window frame in. They just cut the inside guts of the window out. Mm -hmm. And then they make a frame for the window that goes over the old window frame. The new sash? New sash, mm -hmm. yeah. But you leave all the old stuff alone. So you're not, you're not messing with historical bricks, you're not messing with historical masonry, you're not messing with uh, changing the look of the building, which uh, helps us out big time. Because uh, with historical buildings, there's a certain type of cement you have to use, there's a certain brick you have to use. You can't just go to Home Depot or Ace Value and buy a bag of cement and re-cement the outside of the windows. And, and that's because if you use the wrong cement, you end up damaging the rest of it. Yeah, so of, it's, it's basically like the water issue we have. If you use the wrong cement, it's gonna to spread to a certain type of cement and it's gonna create lime. Mm -hmm. Then you get lime rot. Now you're looking at, uh, instead of just replacing windows, you're looking at replacing bricks and cement joints. Um, hey Jeff, yeah. are they building the window on site or are they building the window at their location and then bringing it? So they build the window at their location. Uh -huh. And then what they build on site is they snap the new sash around the old window oh, sashes. Okay. And then they install the new window to sit inside of that. So, so is the window then a, a little bit narrower? Yes and no, because yeah. you're leaving the old window frame there gotcha. for the new sash to clip onto. Mm -hmm. And then the new window itself goes inside that new sash. So, But the old window frames aren't rotted. You could use them still. You can still use the window frames mm -hmm. to clip onto. It's the interior of the window, the guts of the window okay. that are leaking and, and have holes in them. Okay. Um, so, our second option is to go with a regular historical window replacement where that involves having a company come in and actually remove the old windows and install new windows. That entitles uh, windowsill work, uh, masonry work, and some extra money. Bigger expense. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, uh, how much extra money? Uh, so the quote for the replacement windows, where we leave the sashes in, I think came in at 152. 152, mm -hmm. 152. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the quote for, for, for the regular replacement, give me one second. was $273,600. Okay, so <laughs> and, and, and even if we were to do, I mean, we couldn't really get them from Home Depot because we have, we'd have to get windows from somebody who was building them to spec because they're such different sizes. That yeah. would be, that would still be pretty expensive. I mean- You're, you're be, still in the $100,000 range, even yeah. if we went to Home Depot and got vinyl custom built windows. 
which don't last nearly as long as what as these. No. Jeffrey, those are prices installed or not or windows only? These are both prices installed. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, so what are you committed? Uh, we need you to approve the lower number. I just what we need you to do. <laughs> we need not to approve a number. If you're okay with that. If you're okay with that, because I'm okay with 120,000 loss. Okay. The 173, I would, I would, my opinion would be to, there's going to be a little bit of work on the interior of the building. Um, finish work, you mean on the, on finish the, work. On the, in the offices? In the offices. So right now there's plaster that goes up to the old window frames. A piece of that's going to have to be removed and then Patch. the piece of plaster is going to have to be repatched. Okay. So, so, so there's, yeah. there's a little bit. Can you do that? Are you going to have them do that? Yeah. We we can do that. We yeah. can do that. Yeah, and this is included among the several hundred pages of our capital budget plan yeah. and backup documentation, which uh, you'll be receiving. And we've spent a lot of money repairing this building, getting rid of mold, yeah. remediating. Yeah. Spent repairing this six hundred k repair in the building, repointing the brick um, because of the windows. Because yeah. of the, because uh, well, so some of it because of the windows. Some of it because. Of the windows. Because the roof and the parapet. Were yeah, the roof and the parapet. Oh, so the roof was fixed. And how many years do we have on that? Um, Another uh, third. Yeah. Oh. And how much? And how much is because you said this is a tri municipality um, project? What percentage is? No, we own it one hundred percent. It's the service that's tri municipal, mm -hmm. or the services that the CCC provides that's tri municipal. And then, and then everything Jeff did um, from the flood. Um, in the uh, uh, in the basement area and where um, our police have a space uh, is all covered by FEMA. So, are we uh, reimbursed in any way, shape, or form by uh, by the other two members of the um, tri municipal agreement? Or no, 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 the, no, the, the, no the, the, the agreement is just on the services. Yeah, yeah. the council center does pay. Us. Yeah, what the council center does pay us rent. Okay. So, and I'm sorry, all these questions, but um. At any time, have we applied for any um, uh, grants for like historical buildings? Like, no, we just got our designation just a little while ago, so we never applied for it. Yeah, the, the only grant we've applied for uh, as it relates to that building was uh, a building assessment study, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. we did not uh, get that grant. But I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think you need a uh, a building assessment to understand what's going on with those windows no, at this mm -hmm. point. It's and we pretty apparent. If we don't, I mean, if we don't. Do something to fix these windows. We're going to end up redoing the work we've already done. Uh, yeah, we, it, it, there's there's issues on the inside. So, if you ever took a tour of it, there's issues. Yeah. So the thing about old buildings is, the more you take care of them, the more they're going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. It's not like new construction where you have plywood and sheet rock, and you have you have building materials that are meant to last. Mm -hmm. But if you just threw a little bit at upkeep and, and keeping it keeping it together. That building will last you another 200 years with no problem. And, and those are the things we deferred for many, many years. So, and that's the reason why we're. I wouldn't even say yeah, we, that were yeah. deferred for 50 and 60. Yeah, the, the village, you know, not, I mean, we, we fix things. We don't, we don't yeah, push we, things we, aside. We try and yeah. Get that building back up and. But I know what you're saying, Mara. It's, it's, yeah, it's. I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was built at a time when. Uh, they could afford to use some really high quality yeah, materials. Yeah, and, um, and they and, they happen to pick very pretty windows that are like the most expensive to maintain. Um, oh. and I, I did, you know, in the capital budget, I, I do know on the the, the, the capital for the project form that it may be eligible for uh, historic preservation grants. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we'd have to apply for that, but I, and I can't guarantee we get that, but mm -hmm. yeah, because so we're, so our best to do we're, we're all in agreement to go with the 152, 152? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And there might be some extra for interior work. Exactly yeah, for interior work, but I believe we could take care of that in house. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's. I, I see why you can't. The one last point that I want to make, Mayor, it's not a, it's not, a, it's not a museum. Nothing that, not that there's anything wrong with museums, but it's a facility that's used for, right. yeah. you know, significant good in the community, right. and we want them to stay there and, and yes. they feel comfortable there. I may have even had a conversation with Dr. Levy asking him wanted to consider another place before we spent the, the big money, you know, a couple of years ago. And that's where he wants to stay. And that's where everyone, that's where I you know, think it, people it's, need, it's, need. It's a discreet location. And it's close to the train and it's there's a lot of value to it. There's a lot of value to it. How many windows? Are, I've asked you this before, but how many windows? 
Um, off the top of my head, it's got to be 20, 20, 20 to 24, I, think, I believe. How much time is it going to take to install all of them? Like what is like whenever that we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to work on a schedule with the center itself because we're gonna have to close down offices while we're uh, doing windows. So I mean, timeline. If we ordered the windows tomorrow, you could be at eight months to a year before we even get them. Got it. Okay. Uh, in install one window a day. I see going in. So you know, twenty four yeah, days interim. within a month. Well, let's not wait anymore because in the interim there could be yeah, God forbid another. Yeah, that's so many we in the building. And, and the tenant is uh, is uh, aware that they're going to have some disruption when we do this. They're they're anxious, uh, but they're anxious to have. Yeah, 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 I don't think that that'll be a problem. Okay, great. Right. Since Ida received close to twenty plus calls every time it rains, because mm -hmm. we're trying to prevent the walls from being damaged again. Mm -hmm. So we run there, we dry it out, we run fans almost every time it rains. Got it. All right. So, and, and we have to use we, the, the gift of this, the, the village accepted this building and promised to use it as some sort of a healthcare facility. Yeah. So we it do does. have that yeah. commitment. Oh, so that covenant goes yeah, with it? Covenant the property goes with it. For, yeah. for either a public health purpose or yeah. a health purpose. Yeah. So, so to give you a little bit of ease tonight with this building, Jeff, what did you replace down in the basement that uh, we won't have to replace for a number of years now? Heating system, isn't it? Yeah. Heating system. Right. We also installed uh, in-ground drainage now. Right. We have a sump pump down there. We uh, fixed the footings in the floor and the lolly columns. Um, we removed in-ground oil tanks and made them above ground. And um, we moved electrical from the basement and put it on the first floor. So um, if it ever floods down there again, if it ever floods down there again, we're a little more well prepared than we were to begin with. So you, you so it's, it runs on oil now. Yes. Uh, what's that? What's the roof look like? Uh, the roof was just done flat. within, I want to say, ten years. No, it it's less a pair, it's a, it, yeah. No. Yeah. Well, the last like, three what, years. Uh, yeah, we, we were on a board. Right? Yeah. North. Yeah. No, it was, it was longer than that. Well, the parapet was redone. Yes. The roof itself was the flat. So the like roof, flat the roof, roof itself is still under warranty. I know that because I've I've had them out. Would the Would the roof accept solar panels? Um, <laughs> it all depends on the framing. Um. You know, we're talking about 1919 19 building. Um, it could, their engineers would come in and tell us what we need to do. Uh, I doubt the historical preservation is going to allow us to rip off the roof and replace beams. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on the solar company's engineers and whether the roof could hold the winter. So they come on wood? That is not a bad idea. It's not an A shaped roof, it's yeah. more of a, yeah, flat, it's a roof. flat roof. So you yeah. get more area weight load. Yeah. When it snows and yeah. stuff like that, so I don't know if the the ceiling joist, the roof joist, would hold the weight of solar panels that's with a the snow load on it. Yeah. That would be a question for Walter the engineer. Said it. Yeah, that's it's a also yeah. flat. You probably orient it better than if it was a a frame. Yeah, yeah but, but and Jeff did a structural at the Volunteers Firehouse, and it did not it did not get approved for installing a generator on the roof. Yeah, so mm. it's hit or miss. You don't really know how okay. the older buildings were built. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you want to be sure you don't do something that causes another problem. Problem. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks for staying. No problem. And right. Finding the windows. <laughs> tonight is a tonight is a skipping around uh, the agenda meeting. Uh, we have like members <laughs> members of our esteemed uh, budget committee here. Right? There's two items, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, budget committee supporting goal, the board of trustees, budget committee analysis recommendation for reimbursement of police oversight. Okay. ONP. What? I said ONP. ONP. Which, uh, which one's two O and two, two P. P. Right above the Stanley windows. Um, would a member of the budget committee like to come up and briefly give us a, the analysis of the overtime? If not, we can just go through it ourselves, but you're here and want to give you the opportunity. Your time to shine, Ellen. So back in 
2019, a survey was done with surrounding municipalities to. Ellen, Jimmy, if I would just introduce yourself and pull the mic down. You're picking on my height? Like no, I think <laughs> 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 okay, that's fine. My name is Ellen Helm, and I'm on the budget committee with my esteemed colleagues over here. So in 2019, a survey was done uh, with surrounding municipalities to identify what they charged um, outside contractors for reimbursement rate for police details, and if they did an admin fee, and if they charged for car usage. And we then updated our rates, I believe, in the fiscal budget year of 2021, I think, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And we haven't changed it since. And we upped our rates at that point from 110 an hour to 125 an hour. And we included a very small admin fee. So I, we did the survey, added more municipalities. And once again, we're on the low end. Um, more municipalities are now charging admin fees and car usage fees. Um, and with gas prices as they are and car replacement for it, mm -hmm. where they are, it makes sense for us to do this. So uh, the committee that we went through two versions. So it's the second version. Um, that we're proposing. So we initially thought to have three separate fees and then update them every year as our benefits and salaries go up, just have it an automatic part of the budget process without having to do the survey all over again. And then um, after Jerry provided some more information and uh, we got some input from the police department on how many projects they're billing and how many hours. Uh, we decided it made sense to do one fee. That includes the admin fee, which is a staff fee, just like police right. overtime, and then car usage. So rolling it all in to, we're proposing $175 an hour. Um, and again, for it to be automatically updated every budget cycle, based on whatever the salary increase rate is and the benefit increase rate is. Okay, so just for the folks who are watching, uh, what this is, is it's not overtime for police when uh, there's a crime committed or there's, you know, in, in the course of the regular duties. That's paid mm -hmm. out of the village tax fund. This is when you see the work going on on, a, <coughs> on, on Boston Post Road right now that Con Ed's doing and you see a policeman uh, standing there directing traffic and keeping the situation safe. That's what this, the, the, yep. we charge them, uh, uh, we undercharge them apparently, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. they reimburse the money to us. And we, we pay our employees every week. So if, if, if uh, a man or a woman police officer works, you know, this week, you know, they get it in their check next week. But, you know, sometimes we have to wait a little while to get our money from the... Uh, from, but from, it's not just... Um... I think if we just look at the straight police overtime rate, yeah, we're close to recovering, not quite, but right. close. But it doesn't like, cover the ancillary cost. It doesn't cover the admin fee. Um, if I remember what Jerry told me correctly, he said it's about 10 hours a week that's being spent. Correct. Um, and that came out to over $1,000 a week being spent on juggling all the schedules to mm -hmm. cover this overtime. Right. So Jerry, you're fine with this? Oh uh, yeah, it's an excellent work and uh, really comprehensive. Um, the reality is that overtime is paid out here in the village uh, in a block system where the um, <clears throat> longest serving police officers typically get first crack at the overtime and then um, it goes down to the next blocks. And the last block, block number four or block D is um, the newest employees, which would be the lowest overtime rate. So what this does is the way Ellen looked at it is he made sure that this was based upon the highest block rate um, and to take care of the police right. um, overtime for that, plus the admin fee and then the car usage fee, uh, which I think four or five municipalities charge car usage fee. So we're not doing anything much different than anyone else is doing. That's for when a car is parked out there on the street with the lights going. We use our car. Yeah, we use our car and winter time it, it would typically be running and you can't have the lights on without the car running and yeah. those kinds of things. So. Okay. And, Excellent and work. My understanding is that this has a, a slight positive cash flow for us. Mm -hmm. 
It was a little bit. They could. Okay. Okay. It's okay too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is our next step in an act? So, does it go on the work session agenda or you, or you, does it happen administratively? Yeah, administratively. Okay. We, just, we, don't have to, we don't have to vote to approve no, it. No, but thank no. you very much. If I, if I had to vote, I would vote yes. $75 an hour. Yeah. Charge to outside contractors, et cetera. All right. Um, next up hmm. is the budget committee item 2P, uh, budget committee role in supporting village staff and trustees. Uh, please. We want to put the, the chair, the chairperson of the budget committee, the esteemed. Do you, do you want the presentation up on the screen? Sure. Yeah. So folks can follow along. Ogie, can you do that? It's on the backup. Yeah, it's, it's in. Oh, that's a little lapsed. Oh, I have yeah. to change it. Let's change it. And I've just been told that the city of Rye charges everything that Ellen is uh, talking about. So, mm -hmm. if you're on my switch, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the police chief in Rye just texted me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's watching? <laughs> he's, he's the resident of Village of America. Ah, okay. Yes, sure. <laughs> one point. We'll get you all set up there in a second, Charles. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we don't quite know how to have that. That's good. That's good. Well, we, I'm learning that it's sometimes the Yes, well, thanks for having us. We thought this would be a, like an opportune time to introduce ourselves. Obviously, with there being members of the board, we've gotten to know a lot of you very well over the years and spent a lot of time together. But with there being new folks, it was a good opportunity to kind of mutually introduce ourselves, talk a little bit about, you know, what we've been up to and you know what our role going forward might look like. Um, so with that, I thought you know a good place to start would be to just go through who we are with some uh, introductions about you know, who comprises the committee, a little bit about our backgrounds. You know, this will all be relatively brief, um, but just so you know who we're comprised of. We can take a, a quick look at the mission statement, um, which we had worked on at the onset of us getting together and um, just clarifying what the mission statement was, talk a little bit about what our recent efforts have been, uh, and then applying that to some suggested areas of contribution going forward, uh, and then an action plan for how you know, we can all work together collaboratively with next steps. Um, so with that, I want to maybe go to the next slide. And you know, one more. So here's our committee. Um, this is on the village website, uh, it shows the members and our terms. And just briefly running down a little bit of background about everybody. I'm Charles Guadagnolo, I'm the chair. Uh, grew up in Mamaronic, I'm third generation um, village of Mamaronic resident. Uh, went to the Homics and the high school. Uh, my grandfather was a fire chief. I'm here with my family now, my childhood home. Uh, my son goes to the Homics, my daughter goes to Central. Uh, we're very happy to be here. We love the village, it's a great place to go. Um, so I've uh, done a lot with my career across different sectors. I started off at the United Nations and spent a couple of years there, which was an amazing experience. And then pivoted pretty dramatically to uh, work for Bear Stearns, which is one of the larger investment banks in the world, where they went under with others um, in their controllers group, doing cost accounting and budgets, all that good stuff. 
Uh, my father unfortunately passed away fairly young. I had a local general contracting business here in Mimaranek, which I left Bear Stearns right before they collapsed to take over the local family contracting business, which I did for a number of years. Uh, decided to leave that to take a safer path with a company called Toll Brothers, who are one of the larger um, national builders in the country doing mm -hmm. single family and townhouse type developments. Uh, so I was with them for a number of years, and that's me to my current role, which is called yeah, Little Creek. Uh, we're the second largest multifamily developer in the country. We do big apartment developments. Uh, just did a 300 plus unit development in our shell. Uh, I'm on a project out in New Jersey. Yes, you know, so they're big, you know, hundred million dollar developments that are complicated and fun and exciting. Um, yes, yeah, so that's. Bit about me, uh, and then just going through the uh, rest of the committee. I, I think it, you'll, as you'll see, there's a, a lot of really uh, diverse, talented backgrounds of the group that comprises the committee. It's been a real pleasure to work with all of these folks. I learn from them um, as I do you guys and the staff regularly with being involved with this. Uh, it's been an amazing experience, um, and I'll just walk you through who they are. A little bit about them. Uh, so Bill, who is not here, just kind of going down the list in order. Um, Bill is a CPA. Um, he's retired. Uh, and I guess in short, uh, he has more experience uh, as a CPA than years I've been alive. Uh, so he's been involved with the budget committee for a number of years uh, prior to my getting involved with it. So he knows a lot about the background how the committee functions uh, and brings a ton of experience to the table um, it's, it's experience as a CPA. Glenn. Uh, Bill also raised his family here too. Oh, he did? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um, Glenn, who's not here, who uh, is incidentally in the hospital. Um, I think a lot of you have gotten to know Glenn quite well. Uh, he's an independent business owner. Uh, but is probably one of the most active people in this village uh, in terms of um, being present uh, at your meetings and being engaged and, you know, had experience with the budget committee going years back, but very, very in the weeds and very dedicated to being engaged with the best interest of the village. Um, just knows a ton about what's going on around here. Um, and it's very vocal. Uh, and brings that value to us when, you know, we may be looking at things a little bit more broadly, you know, he'll have all the cheap help in his head and be able to share that and be a resource on that front. Uh, Ellen is, um, in her words, happily retired. Uh, she spent 40 years in the financial services industry um, and focused largely on preparing budgets and monthly forecasts, all obviously very relevant to what we're talking about here. Uh, financial reporting to the executive committee at a major investment bank. Um, and then she moved into the project management side, uh, also within the financial services industry. Uh, Ed is here. Uh, he's a retired attorney, um, 30 years with uh, working for New York City uh, and the Transit Authority and MTA, um, focusing on pensions and benefits and employment, uh, obviously all relevant topics to what's part of the annual budget. Um, and then he also served on the traffic commission there in the village. Len uh, is here as well. Uh, he is also retired. He spent 45 years with uh, the New York City's mayor's budget office uh, during the 1970s when New York City was amidst a financial crisis. Uh, worked for New York City's municipal hospital system, planning and managing a mere $1.3 billion construction program. Uh, and also very relevant to uh, hot topics with what we're engaged in. I uh, was the CFO and CEO uh, for a hospital in Lower Manhattan, um, focusing on fundraising, managing an $80 million uh, building program. And then very interestingly and admirably, uh, with that being uh, the hospital closest to the World Trade Center, uh, on 9-11, he led a response uh, serving more than 1,000 patients, which is pretty incredible. He was also the VP at a university managing finances, uh, a $25 million 
capital budget program. So just lots of very, very relevant uh, experience. And uh, Catherine, um, who is not here, but is the uh, most recent member of the budget committee. She's new to Mamaronic, uh, and she holds the Kavanaugh Chair of Rhetoric uh, at Fordham University, where she teaches and researches on the relationship amongst communication, economics, and policy making, hmm. which is fascinating. I can't wait to learn more about what that involves. And again, just thematically a real pleasure to work with all of uh, these very talented people. So with that, um, our mission statement, I'm just gonna read it verbatim. You know, we had worked on this. Uh, <clears throat> the budget committee provides support and guidance to the mayor, board of trustees, village manager, clerk treasurer, and their endeavors to improve the quality of life in the village of Mamaronic while minimizing the financial burden and analyzing and recommending means and methods to A, optimize programs and services, B, identify cost savings opportunities, C, generate revenues to offset costs, and D, identify value-added opportunities. So that's a very loaded mission statement. I think, you know, it's important to stress thematically that, you know, the support and guidance component of this, you know, that we're here to help, to, uh, to just be available as a resource, and then to help all of you guys with uh, these you know, fairly loaded endeavors. They're certainly confident. So with that, uh, just turning to some of our recent efforts to give you guys an idea of what we've been involved with. <clears throat> so the capital budget and five-year capital plan, planning principles and project evaluation criteria. So that's a document, um, you know, and again, thematically that you'll be working in conjunction with you guys, the staff, the board, um, trying to craft this document. Um, there was a lot of back and forth over, you know, quite a long time to really add a lot of information to what is a pretty robust document. Uh, we took uh, feedback, you know, from Jerry in particular, and yeah. but from you guys as well, and incorporated it. Accordingly, and that can be, you know, an, an evolving document to serve as a framework to reference to understand some of the issues that are in play with the capital budget. Um, so, just some highlights of what's in that document. Um, it touches on, you know, suggestions and guidelines for how to approach the tax, the tax cap, um, how to look at debt services as a percentage of the operating budget. Um, looking at projects that are funded by the state federal aid or grants, how you, how you look at the reserve policy and different approaches to that. Um, obviously, the huge hot topic with all of this are the evaluation criteria and prioritization guidelines. Um, and it's worth noting that you know this was included in the 2021-22 budget document package toward the front of uh, the capital budget section. Again, as a uh, as a framework to use as a tool, you know, the benchmarks that are reflected in the document are by no means prescriptive. It's to provide, you know, perspective, whether it be via the, you know, state controller's office or looking at other municipalities and what their approaches and percentages are is that we have perspective about, you know, what we can do with our numbers, which I think it's really important to stress are very flexible. So when we're talking about percentages that have been used or that might be suggested to be used, uh, it's it's just to have perspective about what, what you can look at comparatively as a benchmark. So we also prepared um, and submitted to the board and the staff uh, in 2022-23 uh, su su suggested budget process and schedule framework and that was very much focused on looking at the timing of the deliver of deliverables through the budget season. Um, I think one thing that you guys all recognize well is that it moves very, very fast. There's tons of work to do. These guys do an amazing job at executing this year after year. And in, in looking at you know, the broader month by month perspective, it gives you an idea of you know, what's ahead and how to manage that process um, across the challenge of getting all of that done in those timeframes. 
Uh, so with that, you know, we, we have been attending and um, contributing to the board's budget work sessions. Um, and, you know, and again, thematically, there's so much that occurs in a condensed period of time during those meetings and so much time gets dedicated to it, but it moves fast. And there's, there's a lot that goes into getting that done in that window that's available. Um, sort of separately, uh, a good example, um, we as a group did this early together, um, which is kind of an example of our, our ad hoc projects with feedback from you guys about where we can be of help. We out of the gates had looked at the procurement policy in the village, and that was a document that had existed for a very long time. And then we worked with you guys to revise that, update it, um, make edits, go back and forth together and come up with you know, a, an updated working document for a procurement policy. As you just saw with Ellen's presentation, a, another good example of an ad hoc project uh, was the comparative analysis of the police department reimbursement rates and the level of detail that Ellen brought to the table with that and was pretty phenomenal. And it, it really made a pretty compelling case that you know we had room to probably charge you know more comparatively to what other municipalities were doing. And then on a regular basis during our monthly meetings, you know, we look at uh, revenues and expenses. And I think you guys all probably know pretty well that Augie is very, very good at what he does and has an incredible handle on these numbers. So we're there, you know, if anything, from the perspective of the public that we're you know reviewing this on a regular basis and i can just attest that you know he knows the numbers so well and from the perspective of the operating budget that it's so well managed um, that it's just clear to us on a monthly basis that, that he knows what's going on with that and he's been able to execute it according to budget very very consistently um, but again, you know, our, our being here also representative of a public body to be able to look at these numbers gives the public comfort that there's you know a layer involved and that we're all engaged. So so some suggested uh, areas of contribution going forward. Um, Again, we just want to be a resource where we can assist you guys with utilizing, you know, the processes and frameworks that I've spoken to. Um, and then, you know, within those documents, there are complicated things that you could really dedicate a lot of time to going forward if we're able to be a resource to you guys to look at those more closely and where staff doesn't have the time to, you know, be involved in looking at that from a research standpoint to communicate back to you guys to help you understand some of the issues that are in play you know that's where we can be a resource um for me uh item b is is i think as a lot of you have come to recognize probably you know my biggest passion with this is to helping ensure that the capital budget's adopted across clearly defined prioritization and inclusion criteria and that those projects can to the best of our ability get completed as intended and you know, a, an enormous amount of work has gone into the capital budget. You know, when Jerry and I first met, he you know introduced me to his vision to you know engage department heads in the process, and has gotten an incredible amount of feedback and input from the departments, um, which is a critical <laughs> part of the process. Um, you know, the prioritization. Guidelines, again, are guidelines provided, whether it be through the state controller's office, um, some of the input that we've provided, feedback from department heads. You know, there's a, a framework in place um, and it's sophisticated and a lot of time has gone into it. And an example that I like to use with this is that law and safety are typically at the top of the lists of these frameworks and these guidelines. But where the department feedback becomes really critical, if you take a, like a, a basic example, if there's a safety issue that a, has a big number associated with it that you're going to spend a lot of money on, and that's making its way as a top priority for the village, 
The department heads also know on, if you took an example, a department needs a truck to yeah. be able to get their job done. He's able to get that feedback and, and analyze it with that input and then communicate it to you guys that at a local micro level, okay. you know, while it might not seem like a top priority because it's not a safety or a, a legal issue, but it has to get done. And that's where the process with you guys gets challenging because as we've seen, we have a long, long list of everything that could be in play. There are prioritization criteria that surround this, this big list. And what we have seen is that staff and Augie have been able to put together an example of what the end product would look like when through a involved decision-making process, you guys are able to take that long list and consolidate it down to the choices that you've arrived at to have a working capital budget. And that's extremely difficult and challenging. And that's what hasn't been able to happen. Right. And that hopefully we can figure out a way by working together to get there with right. you. Yeah, Nora, yeah. They're, they're aware that next Monday? Yeah, we're, the, we're, the Board of Trustees is meeting next Monday to talk about the capital budget. The hopefully adopt the capital budget. Hopefully adopt Well, yeah. I don't know if we'll do it in one day, but we're just going to That's why So yeah. we're, we're redistributing the revised. Um, Electronically tomorrow morning and uh, paper version, you know, at some point. Um, Large print. Yeah. Large format. <laughs> yeah. Please. Right. Yeah. So, so we're we're distributing the revised one because we've been working on it for a couple of months now. Awesome. Yeah. That, that's great. Great news. Anything we can do to help Yeah. The thirtieth. We'll talk about it on the thirtieth next Monday. Can they help make copies? Huh? Can they help make copies? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a couple of hundred pages. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> 250 to be exact. Yes. <laughs> that's right. I think that's 250 double sided. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, and it's probably, a, and I'll, I'll wrap this up shortly, but it's, it's a good sequitur into you know, item D on this list. And it's yeah. a kind of a cart before the horse concept that you, know, you have to get there first. But then with that, you can then formulate a five year capital plan where it spreads across a number of years. And then you start looking at things in greater depth, like doing a cash flow analysis over that period of time. You look at the underlying debt service components, the project durations. Um, and one thing we've talked a lot about as a group is that you know the budget serves as a tool to not overspend on the one hand, but the budget also serves as a tool to be clear about what projects you're looking to actually be able to complete. And by not having, you know, the arrived at consensus, it goes in both directions. You can overspend, but we've seen the pattern where a lot of projects don't get done because we haven't been able to arrive at what that prioritized mm -hmm. consolidated list is looking to look like. Um, so, you know, we're planning um, to continue to attend you know, the, the work sessions, if you'll have us and, and help what we can with that. Um, and then, as I mentioned, working with you guys on, on the ad hoc projects and if you can put thought into, you know, things that come to mind that you might not have time or focus on that we could be of help with on an ad hoc basis, um, that'd be great. And then just lastly, uh, an action plan for collaborative and next step. Um, you guys uh, providing us feedback on how we could best contribute and be of help, um, that we can meet together and look at the, the upcoming schedule, which is something that we've done in the past, uh, what resources are gonna be necessary you know, through that process and where you guys have concerns about challenges um, with it. We then can get together as a group um, and look at uh, formulating subcommittees, which is something that we've done in the past where then we divide and conquer as a group and are able to tackle things independently as a committee. And yeah, just areas of focus. And then from there, uh, probably taking a look at lessons learned retroactively after we're able to get you know, through the upcoming season and look at what worked and what might. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. thank you for your volunteer efforts and all the hard work, all of you.
Thank you all very much. Likewise. Yeah. Thanks for coming. You know, uh, Tom, I mean, as long as they're here, I would be interested. We get a lot of people who come to that podium with uh, with wisdom that may or may not be wisdom. Uh, uh, and and, uh, and I, I would like, while you're here, if the, is there anything that you've seen that we've done that uh, alarms you or concerns you or, or you would like to uh, uh, express some cautionary advice? Please. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> yes. It's necessary. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. um, one of my concerns, and I had a very brief in the street conversation with Jerry about this last week, I think a week and a half ago, is it seems as soon as the budget is adopted, people are back in front of you asking for changes to the budget. So I think we need to spend, I don't know if it's more time, be a little more careful. Um, I hope the citizens of the community don't shoot me for this. If we have to go over the path to make sure the budget is a good budget. Yes. And I think we need to be cautious with that. I'm not saying go crazy. But let's have a real budget so you don't have at every board meeting people with their hand out asking for more money. Because I think there are a lot of expenses that were probably known before the budget was finalized, but nobody raised their hands and said something. So that's one thing. The other thing, um, I do agree with Charles on the capital plan. It's not just the monetary impact, but I think if we approve a capital plan for the current fiscal year, it lets Jerry and his department heads know what the work plan is for the year. So it's not, I don't wanna say it's not fair, but Jerry can plan resources to work on multiple projects if it's one at a time. No, I'm just just reiterating what okay. you're saying, making sure I'm hearing. You're, you're saying that it, it's important for us to have a work plan for the year so that they can then do their job at best. And any there's going to be incidences where um, emergencies and everything else. And that goes with the first thing that you said, but really have a work plan so that when we're like, I think from what I'm hearing, I, one example that comes to mind was the um, the Christmas extravaganza thing that came up. Yep. Um, where it's like, well, it sh we should have been been able to plan. Although when they presented it, they said we have the we have the money in the budget, but something like that is that what you're exactly. speaking about? I, you okay. know, we knew when we did the budget last year, we were doing the Christmas events or the right. holiday events, right? So that shouldn't have been something. Oh, we need money for overtime. Whether it's moving it from somewhere or not, it should have been in the budget. It wasn't a surprise. There are always going to be unknowns. There are always going to be emergencies that happen that you know we as a village have to deal with. The other final thing, and Audie's probably going to kill me for this one. Um, so I used to be responsible for a four hundred million dollar budget, and that was back in the nineties. So much bigger now, and it was mostly people and equipment. So very similar yeah. in a way That's to who we are, the village people and equipment. We did quarterly forecasts that had to get approved by the executive committee. Mm -hmm. So if we see we're coming in over plan on whatever, we either find it from someplace else, which Jerry has been finding, yeah. and reappropriate it in that forecast, or we present it saying, we have a problem. And by the end of the fiscal year, this is going to be the size of the problem. So you as the board, get a heads up as to what's going on on a go-forward basis. All right, so a couple of things, Mayor, if I can address. So Please we, do. we did do, oh, no, stay, stay up there for a second. We did do mid-year reviews this year. Typically, we didn't do mid-year reviews. We did do December 1 mid-year reviews, okay. and that, that produced a lot of information, but it also reassured the department heads that they were doing a good job and they were staying on track because you know, as things continue to roll and you start operationally or you continue to operationally run your, your department, it's not exactly uh, something that you really sit down and look at as far as your budget. You have enough money in December, you have enough money to purchase this or to purchase that, but you're not necessarily 
uh, making sure that you can survive the rest of the year, right? So that was the exercise that we put everyone through this year. Um, another thing that we're doing this year that we're starting with the recreation department, uh, but the recreation superintendent has included um, many of the department heads is priority-based budgeting. And what we will be able to present to the board of trustees is an actual real breakdown of what it costs every department uh, in, for every special event that we have. So we have about 19 special events and some of them pop up during the year, like the Monarch Butterfly thing popped mm -hmm. up this year. Um, but if you look at the spreadsheet that Jason and, and, and is now turning over to me to fine tune, we had about um, $180,000 in special events that we had set aside specifically for special events. But in reality, we're at the $380,000 mark. When you include police overtime, additional resources, those kinds of things. So based on the information that, and the involvement that I've had with the budget committee a couple of years ago, you know, I've retained that, that request and once we can, we will incorporate those kinds of things. I mean, the, the reason our procurement policy is better is because of, of the budget committee and the, the, you know, the work that, that you guys and, and ladies did. Um, the capital plan, our, our capital plan, uh, it, you know, you talk to other municipalities, they don't have a 250, 500 page capital plan. We have a, a 500 page capital plan. It gives you all the information that you need if you need it, you know. Um, one of the reasons our bond rating went up was because of how we're running our organization. There's no other reason why um, they would they would increase our bond rating other than the fact that we are making significant, not small, but we're making significant changes to our department, um, to, to our organization. Police overtime detail, we were at what, 110 a couple of years ago? We're going to be at 175. Because not because we're we're gouging contractors, but because we're just trying to recover the actual costs. Those are that's sixty five dollars an hour that we were losing, and we're talking about a significant number of hours. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a lot of benefit that that the budget committee has provided us. The next step for us, and, and if Charlie's looking for a, a new ad hoc uh, uh, assignment, is I have to renegotiate contracts um, starting beginning of next year. You yeah, have ads for that, right? So so. <laughs> So there are there are there's work and and an analysis that has to be done that could benefit us. I can't necessarily invite you to the negotiating table, but I can use your talents and resources to bring in those numbers to justify, you know, why we can't give you this and why we can't give you that. Because I'm the guy who says I can't give you, not that I can give you. But the reality is, um, this board is 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 um, involved enough and generous enough that if we can give our employees something, we will give our employees something. So those are the kinds of things that I continue to take from the budget committee um, and, and use to, to make our organization better. So while I'm not at your meetings because I have to do other stuff, I'm taking all of the information that you're providing, all the emails that you're sending and reading. Um, you know, and that you, you're gonna be very impressed with that spreadsheet when you see the priority-based budgeting exercise that we're going through that I'm retraining staff who do not have financial backgrounds, by the way, retraining them to look at things differently um, as we, as we you know, fine tune those numbers. So it's really been a benefit to have you guys uh, involved with us. And it's a, great, it's a great team, great team. Even Glenn, he's a good guy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 One thing that I, yeah. I'd like to clarify about what I said, um, I'm doing a, a real budget. I think for those people who either attend the board meetings or watch at home and continually hear about budget requests and you know we need more money to it, they don't necessarily know it might be coming from someplace else. So I think that's where the reality or realness, which is in the word, um, needs to come in. People need to understand that flow. So that transparency. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the thing that keeps keeps me up at night is, is, is what we don't know, and um, uh, and the the unexpected. You talked about unexpected things, but we we can expect the unexpected because we live in a in a flood prone area, 
flood mitigation for this board is is is, is a top priority that we um, uh, and that we we have decided uh, as a board to to deal with it a certain way. But we're waiting on permits and and these sort of things, and we can't just wait. Uh, so if we don't get our permits, then we may uh, need to do something else while we wait for the Army Corps to get around. So um, there may be uh, some big ticket uh, capital items that we don't know what they look like yet. How do we budget for that uh, in the capital budget? You don't, and that's probably more for Jerry to answer than me, but you, you don't necessarily because that's the unexpected. You know, so if Jerry has, and I don't know what he's presenting next week, but in that capital plan, the money for the dredging. Mm -hmm. We don't get the permits and you decide to go to plan B. You've got that money that you approved for the dredging to apply to plan B. So it's only if plan B is more expensive, you know, it's that gap that you need to address. It undoubtedly will be. Okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> but, um, but I think also that's where with the mid-year review, Jerry said he did, you know, if we can get into maybe next year, yep, quarterly. Sure. That would also give you a heads up in advance if we might have leftover monies in our operating budget hey, man. that you could then reallocate to some of these capital plans. Yeah. yeah. So what we do do, Helen, is uh, we prepare a monthly financial statement with variance analysis, mm -hmm. cash flows, and a future forecast how we figure we're going to end the year off. And that's done monthly. Okay. So you, you might want to look at that and whatever suggestions so you have, we can add to that report. We actually do it and Jerry will attest if I get nervous, I run into his office and he calms me down for 20 minutes. But take him off the Yeah. I'm on the first floor. Okay. I appreciate this. We have to move on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's go back to the I'm in. So let's go back to the top of the agenda. Uh, under old business, we're not ready for the uh, review of those code for fair and affordable yet. That's, that's correct, Mayor. We'll have that for you for the next meeting. Okay. Uh, building and fire code administration. Okay, but we're still working on it. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, First Amendment, we're not ready. No, that we tied up with this agenda, capital budget, and uh, the uh, meeting I had with the county this morning. Okay, so we're hoping for February. Yeah. Taylor's Lane. Mm -hmm. Anything going on with that? We're still waiting for the appraisal. We're waiting the survey. Survey, I'm sorry. Survey. Just waiting for the survey. Right. Survey says. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go back to new business. Uh, funding. Oh, we're in B. Westchester. We're in two B. Two B. Yeah. Hey, uh, Charles, Charles, do me a favor, close the door. Just not all the way. More, 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 more. Good, thank you. Uh, village planner position was authorized, but not funded. Uh, Jerry, you want to talk about that? Uh, so, so, Mayor, to um, uh, continue to build um, the building department and the resources at the building department, as well as um, moving away from um, a consulting planner, um, we are asking that the board fund a village planner position, uh, which would uh, put a department head in the office with the um, with the secretary of land use boards, as well as the office assistant and the part-time office assistant that currently manages all of the information that comes in through the um, uh, through the planning uh, department. And uh, we're looking for someone to partner up with Carolina, our, our building inspector, um, to look at plan review to make sure that um, we're doing a, a comprehensive analysis of some of the complicated um, projects that come into the village. Um, and so part of this would be funded um, by the savings uh, from the um, consulting planner However, we would still want the consulting planner to work on um, uh, to work on escrow escrow items. Okay, so so it, it, it there'd be a cost saving from the the, the uh, service line. There, there would be, but there would be an even greater cost savings if I could get um, 
if I could get the board to approve um, um, charging back the cost of our planner when they do um, work on projects or when they work on uh, um, applications. Is that, I mean, I don't think that that's appropriate. You know, it, I'm not sure. I mean, I think we have to really be careful about that because it sounds like, you know, that we're trying to monetize our staff. And the staff works for the village, not for the not for the applicant. Yeah, and and I think we've talked about it once or maybe twice before. But the reality is, um, our planner has to also look out for our Ben sisters as well. And so when we're guiding um, applications or property owners through an application, it would be best to have an employee of the village um, working on that. Um, working on that project or working on that review than necessarily consulting a planner. Bob, is, would there be any prohibition under the law of doing it? I think we have to distinguish what function is being performed. If it's a review of an application, that would be appropriate. If it's simply providing advice about the application process, I'm not sure. Okay. So it, it, if, if something is before a board or commission, it's already been submitted. Yes, that would then be for sure. For sure, that we, that we could uh, charge back that person's time. That's right. And right now, that that of course is handled by our consulting planner for escrow. Right. So this would be in more in the in the realm of remedial work on a, on a, on a, on a project that's been applied that's been applied for. It's review work. Okay. So it, it would just help the um, the planning department move things along efficiently, which we still desperately need. <laughs> Okay. So we had, when I first got on the board, we had a planner and an assistant planner. Mm -hmm. We did. We had a, a planner and an assistant planner yeah. um, working uh, for us. Are well, for the village. And they would review, and, and truthfully, when I first got here, there were review of applications that we were not getting paid for. It was, um, you know, supposed to be covered by fees, but the reality is our fees never covered the cost of, of our employees. Yeah. They never did. And, and the the applicant should want to do this because it'll move the application along. And that's the benefit. The yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, the arborist. I mean, we just we, we just, just completed a discussion about. Well, I just want to complete finish the the, the planner. Um, we just completed a discussion about charging our employee or our police officers yeah. to sit on a construction site. Right. This mm -hmm. would be, you know, not exactly the same, but but somewhat yeah. somewhat similar in the fact that we're 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 causing. You know they want they want certain certain um, um, benefits of having a police officer there, so they're 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 requesting that police officer. It would be the same for an applicant and a planner, especially a planner like Leilani said that works for the village that moves things along. But we're actually incurring an extra expense in overtime for the police, and we're not incurring an extra expense for the planner. So I'd be, I mean, I I don't think I don't I I don't know that that other municipalities do it, and I'm kind of interested to see how that would work and i'm also you know i think when yeah. we i think it, our planning department was definitely great when we had a planner but we've had a couple planners and it didn't work out so well so i just i want to be sure we really get the right person this go around because yeah because i do think that it's, it's been bumpy and i think akrf has done a very good job as a consulting planner no, they're very good there's, there's no doubt about that i i do think if it's not broke you know, don't fix it. So I, I think we have to really be sure that we're going to have the same high level of. I can tell you that I did have a conversation with a planner uh, at a municipality north of us, mm -hmm. right? And uh, um, a lot of experience at the county was an outstanding uh, applicant, and uh, was looking to 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 move on. Um, there's no active list as of right now because um, the civil service put out the. Uh, the test on October 1st, but we were able to reach out to this individual who works um, in another uh, community, very diverse community uh, in Westchester. And we thought he was an outstanding uh, candidate and, and knows the, the area. So I'm hoping that we can get someone, um, but it's of course up to the board, but I'm hoping we can get someone um, to help us out and, and really bring uh, a different level of process and, and not, I'm not going to say immediacy, but things have to be things have to move along in, in that department. Um, and you know, things have languished. I can't. I can't. You know, four mm -hmm. six months. I just can't get those phone calls anymore. So we need some help. Yeah. And uh, you know, 
applicants having to go back to boards eight, nine, 10, 12 times. Insanity. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just not fair. I guess the question is, how often does that really happen? Uh, I, a lot. We've heard a lot of complaints. I don't know how often it happens, but yeah. the complaints. I know a man who built a house on Show Road, and uh, not Show Road, uh, in uh, Greenhaven, but it was in the village and had to go back to a board nine times. Either, board. either way, wasn't this in the um, comprehensive plan that people, their complaints was like yeah. about the process of the planning? Yeah, and you, so, you hear, you know, from residents, I, I hear from residents all the time. Well, if Mike were still here, he could give you a near call. Yeah, we don't have enough time. <laughs> You're still ringing. Arborist. <laughs> yeah, what are the Arborist? Oh, oh. So this is not the first time I'm bringing this up. Yeah. I've talked about bringing an Arborist in to handle um, the the uh, the work that's involved in the um, in the tree law. I mean, the tree law was written around an Arborist. I just happen to be an Arborist. That's great. But you know, before I was an arborist, I was the village manager. Do you remember what you said before? I won't remember. Well, I'll I'm sure you, you will. What, what you said before <laughs> about the employees that you know, whenever you're asking them to do more, I do. It, remember. It, it, yeah, that was recent. Yeah, no, you just said that. <laughs> yeah, that was recent. So, so I, I my 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 ask would be for you to do more on this until, until we're at a better spot. I can't believe you're asking me to do more. <laughs> that's, that's okay. that's all okay. So you gotta so, watch what you say. Sure, but, and yeah, that's coming back to bite. I get that part. But, but the truth is, um, you know, we have a significant uh, um, tree planting program. We have a significant, um, very, func very well-functioning tree law. Yes. And, um, while I have no, like, I, I enjoy it. I have no problem going out there doing that and dealing with the fallout of people not getting their permit and all of that stuff. Um, we do have to think about bringing in an arborist if, um, because, because this is our first, maybe our first full year with the tree law. Mm -hmm. But the reality is more people are gonna realize we have a tree law mm -hmm. and they're gonna be putting in more, more applications. And so, you know, this is something that we have to talk about. Is it the full time position or part time? Full time position. Can, can we can we talk about this when we talk about the budget with the arborist for June? Yeah, yeah. We we if you want to, we can talk about that. Okay. I can continue to do what we need to do, but I think it's important, especially with what Ellen was saying before about um, prioritizing and consulting. Because my one of my questions is how many new positions you know, across the different departments are we gonna have in the upcoming year and thinking about, and then prioritizing, I don't know which one is gonna be more important because like you said, we have a new tree law and people are gonna start inquiring, then you're gonna need somebody, then somebody's gonna be over um, overwhelmed with applications about it. So- I'll, I'll never admit I'm overwhelmed, but it can get overwhelming sometimes. And, and you're right about that. You're no, right. and I, yes. Yeah, so, the new Leilani, this is a new, new, position it's not no, I get that it we had and we're going to bring back right no I get it and then and like just even speaking to some of the departments as I've been doing a little tour because it seems like we're kind of a so there's a lot of departments that are short and how are we going short staff short yeah. short staff that's what yes um and how are we prioritizing that and I don't want to put one above the other because that's not right but so so part of that is is the way I operate right a uh, department head will never know whether they're short staffed until I actually short staff them, right? So I hold back on positions sometimes just to see what I can get out of everybody. And that's, and that's, that's what we just did, right? <laughs> And that's what I think may be happening here tonight, but, but that's, that's another point. That's another point, another discussion. But at some point, Mayor, if, you know, the tree law is working well, but at some point we're going to need to talk about, because a consulting arborist doesn't work. Consulting arborist for the village doesn't work because it's a it's a few hundred dollars an hour for an arborist. Yeah. What, what about a what about a part time position that you would direct? I mean, since we have you and you are an arborist, we could talk about that. Yeah. we could talk about that. Yeah. So can we can we move ahead with the village planner and save the arborist for a budget cycle? We have no problem saving the arborist for a budget that? cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we should try. I, I think it's better. Out. My concern about you know full full time employees is that the salaries only a portion of it. We have 
a big you're gonna add hook. so that's why I said part time. So if you look at that salary survey I sent I sent everyone, that there's fringe benefit on that. There are some we're at 80% fringe benefit rate. There's some municipalities at 100 percent fringe right. benefit rate, but wow. you're right. And you have to take the salary plus 80%. You're and, exactly right. And, and, and medical's going up too. What's the what, what's the salary on the planner? Uh, 172. 172. 172. Yeah. Somebody didn't read the backup. It's 82. All right. All right. That that's one item moved on. Uh 2C. We did that already, didn't we? Yeah. Yes, 2C, yeah. we did. Thank you. Uh Westchester General Waterworks. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> Uh, Brevoort Lane, uh, and uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Purchase booster station. Uh, these are two projects that were approved a while back. Um, you know, they were approved with a uh, with a tentative, you know, uh, budget. They they hadn't done the work yet. It was an estimate. Uh, in a couple of cases, the work came in. Uh, it was more complicated than they had thought, and also the, the price of uh, a lot of the material that are used for these projects, like everything else, has gone up. So that being said, uh, there had to be an adjustment made, and the adjustment is to uh, you know uh, you know these are these both these projects are what are called uh, uh, shared projects. I mean, it's all three municipalities. Harrison, Town of Mamaric, and the Village of Mamaric pay for these. Like if something happens on a, let's just say, on Prospect Avenue here, a pipe breaks, that's a local project because it doesn't benefit the Town of Mamaric or the Town of Harrison. So we would pay to fix that pipe. But these two projects, uh, Rebort Lane, is actually in no, yeah. in Rye. It's that outside district. It's right? it's out Funny it's outside that. of our district, uh, but we then recoup that money from the uh, ratepayers in Rye over the course of time. So that <laughs> that will pay for itself over time. Uh, the purchase street booster station uh, and related uh, reduction pressure valve. Uh, if as you read in the backup, that was a plan that was approved a while back, and they just ran into. Uh, Problems that are going to make it cost more. So that's on for tonight. When, when we have, I mean, we un, we basically underwrite it and then get paid back. Do we get paid back hundred percent? For what? Or, for well, what? I mean, for you know, for 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 a joint project. If we're the people who are sort of fronting the money and then we're going to collect it from the water fund, do we collect all the costs? We collect, you know, it's anything paid for out of our water fund. Yeah. Right. So. If, if it's a, a project like this that's a hundred thousand dollars, or you could write the check from the water. If it's but if something, you have to, but if we have to bond it, for instance, if we have to bond it, uh, then it, 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 it gets out of water fund. It a hundred percent water fund right. is paid. So out. It's yeah. not. It doesn't. It, do, it The bonds are paid out of the water it fund. It doesn't too. go through our budget. No. It goes through no. like it's a separate. It goes through our water fund. It goes through water fund. Yeah. It's, it's the rate okay. payers fund. As I make budget. a distinction, yeah. just you know, so we move on the board about ratepayers and taxpayers. Taxpayers are obviously people who own property and pay taxes. But ratepayers are people who uh, own property, and some of it is non-taxable, right? The schools, mm -hmm. you know, the schools pay for their water. Uh, Westchester General Waterworks is uh, actually one of the huge uh, water users in this area, pays for their water. The Ice House, uh, you know, pays for their water. So we we have, uh, you know, it, it, it's actually more equitable to do it uh, on rate paying churches, as I hear the church bell ringing in the back, pay for their water. The village, so, the village pays the for village water. The village pays for it. We all pay for our water, so it's a bigger pool mm -hmm. than if we were just paying for this out of our tax money. Right. Okay, everybody fine with that being, these two being on the agenda tonight? Sure. Yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> we can get, up, get stuff off the agenda for February if you want. Sure, let's go. Supplemental appropriation, appropriation to fund survey work for Florence Street Stormwater Evaluation Improvement Plan. Now, what number is that? I think letter. Three. I think this is on our agenda. It's just meant to go on. The no, this is for February. It's it's on for February. Okay. Not... Wait, which which letter? Two e. Two e. Oh, okay. Jerry, you want to talk about that for a minute? Um, 
So it's additional work, Mayor, that needs to be performed, um, survey work that wasn't included in the original uh, proposal. So we're asking for $7,950 to complete the survey work for the project that we have, um, that we've initiated on, on um, Florence Street, which is the stormwater uh, improvement plan. Mm -hmm. That's the oversight that we had that we were, we, in order to complete the, in, in order to complete the, um, the evaluation and the plan, we need to get the survey of, of, the, gotcha. uh, of the street and the and right of way in adjoining properties. Gotcha. So you're asking for us to, to have consensus to, to, to put it on for the February 13th. Yeah, it says February 13th. Right, but it's yeah. on, yeah, okay. It's her February 13th. Everybody fine with that? Yes, and I have just one other related question. We had um, allocated some of the pandemic um, relief funding to engineering studies in the industrial area. Have mm -hmm. we, how are we, I mean, I know- We've initiated that. You've initiated that. Yep. That's Washingtonville. We had 150,000 dedicated yeah. To the Washingtonville uh, neighborhood okay. to create a, a drainage. Right. Right. It wasn't just the industrial; yeah. it was from uh, it was, from yeah. Marinick yeah. Avenue to yeah. Animal. In, in that, yeah. So that's on. So the uh, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Gino, our engineer, mm -hmm. has been talking with Calvert Sessions to uh, uh, develop the proposal for them mm -hmm. to submit. So we should have, hopefully have that within the next you know, several weeks. And that'll be coming back to us. Okay, it'll thank come you. Back to you. Great. It'll it'll demonstrate the art. Thank you. Yep. Okay, PLRB proposed local law to amend chapter code, general code, general provision as it relates to maintaining electronic copy of the village code, uh, adding a new chapter as it relates to amendments and publication of the village code. This is so we don't have to have the printed code. I have no it's, idea. This is a couple of things. Yeah. It's part of the, the effort that we've begun to try to update the village code because a lot of things have, have changed, one of which is that the code requires publication of new zoning laws in a newspaper, mm -hmm. which in my mind is silly. Nobody reads the ad, the, the, uh, Classified the, the legal ads in newspapers anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, more, much more important to require that it be posted on the village website, but it doesn't. A couple other things it does. The village clerk is required to maintain a printed copy of the code. Also, also anachronistic. Nobody's looking at printed copies of codes anymore. They're all up online all the time. Uh, the third thing, one of the problems we have in the code is that requirements that relate to each other are scattered all over the code. Uh, adopted at different times, never coordinated. What we're trying to do is coordinate them so that when someone's looking at the code, they can intuitively find the things that are relevant to what they're doing. In this case, they were amendment provisions three different places in the code. So I've consolidated those here without changing substance. They're consolidated here in the first part of the code, which is all the administrative uh, requirements. There, there are two parts, administrative and general uh, regulations. And what I want to do is create a third part, which has all the building and land use uh, regulations in it. So someone's doing that and the staff can look at one place for those kind of uh, that kind of legislation. So would we not use Code 360 anymore? We no, no, we use, use code, the all, vendor. All code 360. Because they only, I, I think they only update every six months. So like when we, so when we, when like what the tree law didn't get, we adopted it in October. It didn't get published till like twice a year. Yeah, they, yeah. So we well, usually publish on the public law, the local laws on the web. We right. Well, that's. I mean, that's where the tree law reason. was, though. But I mean, if, but I mean, if you went, if you went to the code, you didn't see the tree law. You had to go under new, yep. newly adopted yep. laws. I think we should look into having yep. an update more frequently. Yeah, but I mean, as far as what we currently did, and you can correct me if I'm incorrect. Uh, irrespective of whether it's the online version or the printed version, it only gets updated twice a year. That's correct. Yeah. Right. You just wanted so, to hit it. Regardless of. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if if you want a section in our, on our website that that demonstrates or or um, provides the most recent local laws, we can we can set that up. Well, I mean, it's the, they are there. Yeah. I, I just I just like I think yeah. Bob's trying to get it more clear, and I'm like, you have like two opportunities a year to do it. That's right. all. Well, yeah, I'm sure we should look at that. I'm sure, that's just a matter of cost. They'll update as many times you want, charge you for it. So, PLO, I'll, be, I'll look into it. Yeah. PLLD covers what? Just go, go through it line by line here. 
you want to go through the individual? Well, it just, you know, just wait, can you hit the highlights? <laughs> <laughs> so the first provision has to do with keeping a copy of the code on file right. in, the, in the printed bound volume. So you, you scratch no uh, you the the kind of copies. Keep it on the website. So no printed code will exist? Right. Well, is that wise? Because stuff could happen. <laughs> well, I'm sure the village's website is backed up. Backed up. It's not going to lose uh, the content of the uh, website or the clerk's files. It is backed up, but by a vendor, I mm. can't automatically return. I might have mercy yeah. to back it up to I mean, restore. It, yeah, I mean, I, some there, there's some it's some disaster could happen that would blank everything, and then you does anybody remember what the code is? <laughs> <It's kind> of, <laughs> at least provide a CD. They don't anymore. They, they don't like a no. or like I mean, well, there, there needs I I I believe there needs to be a physical one physical backup somewhere. How does it um? How would that jive with the record retentions policy required by New York State? Do you have to have a paper copy of the code? You have to have a PDF copy of the code. You have to have a PDF copy, like a paper PDF copy. PDF copy is on trolley copy, right. not paper. Two distinct items. But the, 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 there's a distinction. I mean, we can have a copy of the code, a paper copy of the code, if we want at Village Hall, but this doesn't require it. Yeah, correct. So we we just we can do it. We can do what we're doing now. Yeah. And if somebody comes in and says, "I don't have a computer," or you know, you can just flop the code up. <laughs> we have two copies in our office. Yeah. Hey, I, I I'm just I just well, that no, I agree. The yeah. worst case scenario. Yes. Uh, we can, we can put that out if that if that's. Well, I I just. If the board wants to make sure there's some physical. No, no, I, I think the, the distinction is that your change doesn't require a copy. And that's fine. And we can do that, but still have a copy. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> a copy should exist. Copy. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Right. Is, 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 our, is, our, is our village clerk okay with that? Not yeah. the, we not have the two copies. Or the village clerk part. Yeah, we have two copies. Okay. Perfect. All right. Village clerk and the village treasurer are in. Conflict on this one. Yeah, one yeah. Plus, one plus one, right. right. I convert the current code into PDF and save it on a network. Right. And then it's on a shared yeah. drive that everybody can access it. And then it's back. Right. Right. Of course, we'll technology. Yeah. All right. Next. <laughs> the next piece has to do with amendments. Mm -hmm. And there were there were three different amendment sections in the code. And this consolidates them all in one place. In, in a new chapter three, which is about amendments okay. and publication. And, the, and it all, this also includes okay. the provision in the zoning law that permits references to the planning board and board of appeals mm -hmm. with respect to amendments to the zoning code. That's I'm taking that out of the zoning chapter and put it in the amendments chapter. Okay. All right, so is everybody fine with putting this on for uh, on February 13th? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. We will schedule the public hearing for whatever is February 27th. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody's fine with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bob PLLE as the indemnification. Uh, two G. This is something that was talked about several years ago. And there is at present no limitation. The village is obligated to pay for the defense costs of the current law, current village law, for the defense costs of an elected or appointed official who is being investigated or is a subject of a complaint to the ethics board. There's presently no limit on what the counsel for the official can charge the village. Uh, this would impose this law would tie the hourly rate to the rate then char charged by the village's principal legal counsel, principal litigation counsel, whether it's someone like in my case that we retain my firm or whether it's the village attorney or whoever's doing the litigation, whoever's doing whoever's doing litigation, it would be that cost. And I have added a 20%. It made the limitation 20% above that because 
you already you get a discount. Mm -hmm. The mill gets a discount for the volume that goes through. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. For a one-off, you wouldn't get that discount. It's not fair to ask a, a lawyer to charge it the same discount on a one-off matter as he or she would on a, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on a, a volume operation. And is this the rate? I, I think. I mean, should we clarify that it's the rate? Your first seven hours, or the higher rate that you charge if it's more than seven hours? Which which of the that's, two rates? That's not, that has to do with that, the, that to, with applicants. Yeah, that has to do with applicants. There's, there's only one rate for litigation, too, right? No, there's no. one rate for litigation, and and that doesn't uh, okay. limit the the uh, the, uh, the defendant from uh, ponying up their own money to it for additional. No, okay, yeah. great. Well, that's fine. You know, just the genesis of this is that we had we had a I know a, a, we had a, a case and the defendant uh, had, the bill was up to one hundred forty seven thousand dollars. So I'm less troubled about the rate than I am about the first edition, which is adding that the village will not pay for such defense um, where the administrative proceeding is brought by on behalf of the village. So does that mean that there's an ethics complaint against a volunteer? Or an elected official brought by the board of ethics or the board of trustees, they wouldn't be indemnified. So that's current law. No, it's a bowl. It there. It says it, it was moved, but it's not. It's it's current. It's the current requirement. Um, let me just find I I think she's just going based upon what is or what's written at the top. It's bolded, and yeah. it, because it's bolded, that's something to be added. That wasn't in. That's not in. I mean, I looked up. Um, 30, I looked up 36.3, and that's an addition. So that, except what's added is that A, the village will not pay for such defense. Let me just get the code up No. Hmm? Warm it up. No. No. <laughs> it's crazy. The, 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 the language was changed. The current code provides this duty to provide for defense shall not arise where such civil action or proceeding is brought prior to half the village of America. And then, and then it goes on to say, with regard to administrative proceedings, is any, any proceeding before any administrative body which has the authority to impose sanctions or penalties, including any administrative body of the Village of America, which was intended to cover the yeah. ethics complaints. So, I mean, what? Says, let me just finish. Except where the administrative proceedings brought by or on behalf of the village at the direction of the Board of Trustees, the village manager, or in the case of a compensated employee, the employee's appointing authority. So it's there, it's the last sentence of current 36 day. Okay, I didn't see that. Um, and so I guess I, what what would be um, an administrative hearing other than the ethics board? I mean, this wouldn't, so if the village is sued, let's say some, if the village is sued and somebody on the planning board or zoning board or HCDM or VAR sued, those are Article 78 and that would be paid for in part by our insurance company. We were, we were, if, they're, if they're Article 78s, yes, the answer is they would, they're not necessarily by our insurance company. Right, but, but paid by the, that's, it's not a, it doesn't. That's what defense in, a, in a, an action for money damages. Right, but that, so that's not, this doesn't well, pertain to this. So what does this pertain to other than ethics? Well, the NLLB. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. if, uh, when, uh, with the incident that uh, the mayor referred to, when the mayor uh, had to hold the hearing to make the determination, is that the type of a, so now that would be the board of trustees. If uh, uh, someone was recommended to be removed from a land use board. Correct. If it would be, it would be, as the mayor said, the NLRB, some, you know, the EC, well, these are generally, these are almost exclusively against the village, right. not against individuals. Right. But uh, theoretically, that would be the County Human Rights Commission. Yeah. 
uh, things like that. Administrative history. And this doesn't give the village manager discretion to say yes or no. Well, they can just limit. Yeah, I think that that would put you in a really awkward situation. Well, you or well, your others would be awkward. Not me, but I have to say what you say. Right? So here's what it, what it does. Okay. So here's can you hear me? Here's what it does. There, there are two issues in regard to any legal field. There's the number of there's the rate and the number of hours. Mm -hmm. This defines the maximum rate the village will pay by reference to an existing rate that the village is paying when it's paying its primary litigation counsel. The second piece, the reasonable hours, uh, has to be decided by someone. Now, it could be the village manager. The only problem with that, it seems to me there's something inherently conflicted about the village manager bringing a charge against somebody, for example, and then deciding how reasonable their, the attorney's fees are. Yeah. So I built in the provision which, which requires the village, the village manager to retain an outside counsel at the village's expense to review the bills. Yeah. That way, that way we eliminate any risk. Not that not that the village manager would do this, but that a village manager should say, sure, you can have whatever rate you want. You, you got you got an hour. That's your entire defense. Okay. Okay. All right. So everybody's calling putting this on for February 13th? Yes. Yes. Thank God. Um, <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, rescinding chapter 176 of the village, fire, uh, village code fees and adding a new chapter, fees and costs. We have time to go through this tonight? If you mind? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, um, let me just this section you just pull it up here. This one so this one this one basically moves the current fee provision, the provision by which um, the village charges the escrow fees that applicants pay. Mm -hmm. Moves it to section 23 to the administrative provision of the code, not section 176 in the middle of the other stuff where it was. And then um, define a little more closely. Well, it does two things. What it does is clarify, first of all, that when you set fees every year as part of the budget, you do it by resolution. Mm -hmm. There's no dispute about what the authority is to do that. That's something. Number, number two, it clarifies the uh, limitations on the fees that the village can charge. There was a uh, decision by the appellate division a couple of years ago that rejected broad sort of non regulated discretion on what the fees can be and requires that they be in reference to be, be referable to other costs incurred by the village or other municipalities for similar services. So I wanted to put that language in to protect our code against the challenge on that basis. Um, the other thing that this thing, the other thing this does, It, uh, it clarifies a little better. I fixed the language a little bit to clarify all the things that this can apply to, the, the fee recovery provisions. I did not change the provision that uh, does not require escrows from individuals, residents appealing from zoning board decisions or appealing to the zoning board for a building inspector decision right now. If an applicant for a building permit takes the matter to the zoning board, the applicant has to pay the review costs, the, the, the escrow. But if the building department grants a permit and someone wants to challenge it, that person, that, that appellant does not have to pay the review costs. That's current law. You can change it if you like, but that's current law. Mm -hmm. So I kept that, I maintained that in here. 
we discussed changing it, didn't we? So that's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what this does. Hmm? I don't remember. Do we? I think we discussed changing that. You discussed it. You never came to a yeah, I, I think resolution on whether that's what you want to do. I, I, I think we were giving these uh, the, 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 these uh, the, the challengers a free ride when when uh, yeah yeah. I, I I understand that you feel that way, but I have real concerns, and I, I don't want to. I'm not not about anybody specifically, but if if an indi you know if an applicant is asking for something from any kind of a board, they're getting a benefit. They're improving their property. If a permit is granted, which has happened in this village, that was granted inappropriately. The only recourse is for is for a is either for the building inspector to self-correct, which has not been our pattern, or for um, an aggrieved neighbor to challenge the interpretation of the building inspector. And 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 if those if those people cannot do that without um, having to incur the costs, I think we're setting ourselves up. And I think there's, there is, I think some case law about specifically, you know, what, what charges can be made and I think what's called third party appeals. But I think we really have to be careful about um, doing anything that might um, isolate a building inspector from making um, a determination that's not that residents really have to go deep into their pockets to to challenge i think that's well, I, I i don't think charging a fee for a service if, if you're if you are challenging a building department's uh determination you're asking for a service and that service is from the zoning board the building department the attorneys who have to handle it and it costs the taxpayers in a lot of instances tens of thousands of dollars so it, it is not, you know, I'm not saying that, that all of that should be covered by escrow, but there should be some sort of a fee. You should have some skin in the game. If you're going to, you know, uh, you accuse your neighbor or you accuse the building department of doing something wrong, you should have some skin in the game. Uh, you know, we, we have uh, people, uh, you know, uh, taking uh, appeals against property that is that not anywhere near them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what is the damage to them? And, you know, it, it's not too much to ask to say, uh, oh, you know, there should be a fee that at least covers some of the administrative costs of this. And, and, and I, th you may. I, I, I think we could make an exception for contig contiguous landowners or, or people in the immediate vicinity, but I think uh, these, uh, these um, crosstown appeals and, uh, and, yeah. and projects are, are problematic if, 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 if they're not phoning up somebody. And, and they're costing the applicant who, who, for whom this is directed at tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. I mean, we, we, you know. It's, it's, it's absurd. Uh, so I, 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 that's what I would do. I mean, I would, uh, I, I'd love to, uh, I'd, I'd be happy to carve out an exception for contiguous landowners, mm -hmm. but, um, but uh, not for anybody who feels like appealing. I mean, you know, I mean, somebody could come from out of town and want to appeal, you know. Well, if you recall, there was a recent situation in which, even, well, let me back up. Only a person who was agreed mm -hmm. yeah. to file an appeal. Now, but we've had people file appeals and have them, you know, That's take up correct. a lot of time and energy. That's correct. And in, this, in the recent case, which was resolved by a two to two vote, so yeah. the, the appeal failed because it was a two to two vote, I think the applicant had to go back six times yeah. just to get that with counsel to get that result. So I don't know how you reconcile that situation. I mean, on the one hand, someone who doesn't live nearby, perhaps in the area you were thinking of, Trustee Young, shouldn't be able to bring an appeal anyway. But people do. Yeah. And uh, well, they, they may they may have grounds for it, but but they're, they're, it's not. Uh, you know, I mean that that has to be the standing needs to be uh, evaluated. But I, I don't think we should just be. Uh, <laughs> Be opening ourselves to endless, uh, endless um, uh, discussion of something that's been settled. Uh, if somebody wants to litigate something, they need to, to pony up for the expenses. Or at least have a fee to, you know, to, to begin the process. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to, you know, we, I had, we had an election issue. I, we had to pay an attorney to do it. I, mean, I didn't get, we didn't get a free ride to, uh, to, to go to court. You got to pay the attorneys. You got to pay. You got to pay. You know, so it is what it is. 
I'm not opposed to attorneys being paid. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I yeah, I, I, you know, I think it's reasonable. I think it's reasonable that, that we change that. I don't think it should be a free ride. Okay, so can you redo that? Yeah, just give me a sense of what, what you want to do. You want to just eliminate that exclusion so that they pay the same fees as the appellant who is not the applicant pays the same fee as an applicant would. You want to impose some sort of a fee in lieu of that. How do you want to address it? I have a fee in lieu of that. Okay. Do you yeah. have an amount in mind? I, I think we should talk to the billing department and see what you know what their soft costs are incurred. Okay. And, you know, is, I, it's obviously a service. And and if and, and if you know if we wanted to carve out an exception for the you know for the next door neighbors, the person across the street, yeah, I mean, the, or, or it, maybe a lower amount for the person across. The street. You, you know, I mean, uh, that that would that would make sense to me. But uh, I, I I think an idea that that the building department makes a decision. And anybody can roll up and uh, and, and start a uh, uh, start a, a an expensive uh, litigation. But a zoning board hearing that's been zoning board hearing zoning board. Uh, is is absurd. It's frankly absurd. And, and if that vote, I mean, I, I, don't, I hate to comment upon zoning board matters, but I can't help it. If that vote had went three to two for the applicant, they'd be they'd be building department decisions every month, getting challenged in this community. From all over, anytime somebody had a pet peeve anywhere, and there'd be nothing getting done in this community. So my suggestion would be that you use the the radius, the notice radius, as the area within which to provide for the reduced fee. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, you, can you draft that up? Sure. Um, and speaking of a notice radius, we had that. That's one of the things I know it's, you've got a long list, but we had um, tried to, before the pandemic to have the same notice radius for every application because every board, because many people have to go, the same application goes before more than one board. Yeah. And it would be easier if it was the same people who always got noticed. So, what I'm trying to do with that, and that's a little complicated, but. What I'm trying to do with that, and I, I need to sit down with the village manager and the building inspector to talk about this, and the planning board secretary, is try to establish a coordinated notice process mm -hmm. and some reasonable process by which people who are interested can be informed during the progress of the mm -hmm. application as to what's happening. Right now, we have, yes, you have to go out and post a sign and, and, and send out mail and all that stuff. But then a matter goes on, can go on for six months or a year, and there's no further notice required. Right. So we, we and these days, you know, at, at one time that made sense because you only send out mail and it costs money. And, mm -hmm. But these days it's not hard to fix. And I think what we need to do is, I, I've drafted sort of the bones of that, but we need to sit down and talk about the mechanics, come up with a draft that we can then formally present to you, but really go out and talk to the Planning Board, Zoning Board, HCZMC, about how how the whole approval process should work. Not for the purpose of relaxing substantive standards, but for the purpose of making it easier to get through the process and having more uh, opportunity for public participation in the process. Because we had drafted a law, but it was still all mail notice. All via That's right. And, and there are some mail notice requirements. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so I have to... So well, you, you, you're going to work on that. Let's just get to it. Yeah. a couple more, and then we have to go to executive session. Uh, letter of map revision. This is a LOMAR. Uh, this is uh, a, a change to the flood map that is produced by uh, the federal government. And uh, what they, what our responsibility in this, uh, some people will tell you that we cannot approve it, but that's not true. Uh, what our responsibility is in this is to really just to add it to our federal flood map. Am I correct, Mr. That's correct. We have to in, uh, incorporate this loamer into our floodplain development plan. That's yeah, correct. That's correct. All right. That's on for February 13th. Is everybody fine with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just do this last one and we'll go into executive session. Uh, local law to exceed the property tax cap <laughs> for the fiscal year 2023 2024 budget for February 13th. Okay. So let me give you a little background. Every board that I've ever sat on since the, the 
tax cap has been passed. The town of Mamaric and the village of Mamaric goes through this exercise every year. So what you do is, is that you, you have this law kind of lined up. Uh, you open a public hearing. You go about your budget process. Uh, since I've been on this board, we haven't gone over the tax cap. I, don't, I think maybe once in the town of Mamaric, they went over the tax cap. So if you're not going over the tax cap, you just kind of let the law die, right? But this way, you have it ready because it has to be passed before you go over the tax cap. If you go over the tax cap without passing the law, I don't know what Albany does, but they do something to you. And you have an absolute deadline for getting your budget done. And you have an absolute deadline. So it's best to you know kind of have the, for want of a better analogy, having the bullet in the gun and not having to pull the trigger. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's it's a tool. It's, it's a tool that, yes. that we don't want to use, but if we have to, it's available to us. Perfect. This is why you were you were in journalism. For there school. you go. Okay. It's, it's, so we're giving ourselves a tool, and we're uh, we're going to promise everybody we don't want to pick it up. Okay. So everybody's fine with that. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. And and let's leave the rest, and, and let's not try uh, and add too much. We one, did. We did. One one item. I know. I I brought up a, a item S. Uh, there's there's backup on it. I just asked my trustees to. The fellow trustees to pull it back up so they don't have to print it again uh, next month. Okay. Okay. That's all. Two of us all right. don't print uh, anything. And we have we have vice council and an executive session uh, for Michael Dunaway versus the village of Mamaroneck. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 1051D of the New York State Public Officers Law to discuss matters of pending litigation. And I will make that motion. Second. Or. Yes, Mayor. Trustees Rowlings? Yes. Trustee Isaac Reed? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Hi. Okay. Uh, LMC, going into executive session. And we're going to go into that room over there. Did you get uh, something to eat? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, was there any paper backup for this? Um, I, I give you mine. Okay. Can you just Folks, I'll see you in the, in the yeah, next room. I didn't get it. I All the items getting covered in works.
Well, I'm, I'm really excited about it because um, I think a lot of the things I've been talking back in is just because I want to learn a little bit more. Oh, okay. Different tracks. Yeah. Four different topics like for a new election. Mm -hmm. All right. And they did it for, during the pandemic. We're going to be right? starting a regular so, meeting in a couple of minutes. Okay. Sorry, we're running a little late. Right. Yeah. 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 21st Street and 10th Avenue. I was supposed to hide under our desks. Oh, yeah. That would have worked. Oh, I am muted. Okay, thank you for following. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Manny. Gary? Thank you, at least a 10 minute for everybody to get to the bathroom, you know. Yeah. It does feel a little warmer in here now. They feel warm? Warmer. I feel warmer. warmer. Oh. I was cold as hell. I warmer. I said warmer. Yeah, I know. Oh. <laughs> I was backing up with oh. that. So it was like, warmer. I'm not warm, but I'm warmer. Definitely. Oh, okay. All right, you know what? We're going to start, and Manny's going to catch up. Uh, first off, uh, LMC, are we broadcasting? Augie? Yes. You ready? Okay. Um, first thing I'd like to do is ask for a motion to uh, close the work session. So moved. Second. Yep. All in favor of closing the work session? Aye. Uh, Aye. 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 Aye's had it. Okay. Uh, good evening, and welcome to the January 23rd, 2023 uh, Village of Mimaric, uh Regular Board of Trustees meeting. Um, there are emergency exits on my right and on my left. Uh, if you're, if you have a phone, which I'm sure you will do, please put it on uh, mute. Um, and please join me in Pledge of Allegiance. All right. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, we are about to start. I, mean, I need a motion to open the meeting. So I moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> okay. Uh, Mr. Rawlings is here and he'll, he'll be uh, here in a minute. Uh, first item on the agenda is communication to the board. Good evening. 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 Good Thank you. So, well, it's Thank you. So, I'm not going to give it to you. You're welcome. Augie, I'm sorry. No worries. You? Thank you. 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 <laughs> the middle child. The middle child. Six five. I'm sorry, Paul. No, that's okay. It's all good. So this has to be the tale as Lane basically start off with. And I started this basically back in 1998 or 99 with uh, Joe Lanza. So what I want to do is just read a little history here. So the first uh, document that I got here, which is dated uh, August 28th of 2002. 
It's uh, from the Commissioner of Health. At that time, it was just with Lisbon. Uh, this is going to George. So I don't want you to read the record. Basically, is where it's highlighted in the letter. So the first word is the site. Read that, please. These site reviews have demonstrated that there are no human health and safety risks with regard to the proposed use. As a result, the Westchester County Department of Health has no objection to the site being considered by the village for sports playing fields. So back in 2002, they basically gave us authorization, it seems like. And it should be sports going on, which should be activities, it's great basically, but it's the young or old. Um, so that's the first one. So again, it's just the first one. Second one. 2005, February 23rd. It's coming from the uh, project manager from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. And it's going, it's in reference to Taylor's Lane, and it's coming directly to me. It's like, so it's on the same thing. Can you kind of read it? It says, the, I'm like, I work on this. Yeah, I'm buying a new donut now. <laughs> The New York State DEC will need to review plans for the construction of playing fields. For example, the location of proposed parking areas and traffic routes over the site. The New York DEC will work with the village to construct the playing fields in a manner that will maintain the integrity of the landfill. Again, that's not playing fields only, but the seniors and the new well. So they're walking track around there or something like that. So they'll be, I think, just using the new house. This one, this one is from Lenny to Mr. Uh, Pergadia. Correct. Uh, I have a proposed layout on file that contemplated the two regulation soccer fields at the site. Right. 2004. And you can see basically we went through the exercise. We got permission. We were opening the rules and regulations and so forth many years ago. Here is a copy of the blueprint. It's 2000, February 2000. So I'm not certain what the delay is trying to get this over and done with and closed. So I just want to, you know, hopefully shed some light, some history on it. Um, so that's the that. So there's my. So, funding has a lot to do with it. And I know in the past, Fields for Kids, which are, which are handling was great. And I worked with them back in the day. They're, I'm sure they'll put up some money if we, money comes into play with this. The other thing, you guys are really committed, it seems like, when I walked out of here, it was great to try to find field space or activity space, or whatever the word is. And so, I also spoke about, you know, Rushmore, I spoke about Florence. Spoke about the family, Lauren. There's green space that clearly these organizations could use. In addition, it makes money for us. So, like if you near, live near on Bishop Avenue or if you live on Stanley, the train comes by, it's noisy. People who live at the parks right now, like say Columbus, there are housing developments there, there's noise there as well. So, you know what you're getting yourself into. So, I'm just tired of hearing NIMBY, and I heard a great one tonight, it's called Cave. Thank you, Manny. You know, don't do anything at all. Zero status quo. But we have to move on. Now you tell me from what I don't remember uh, school district is great and share in their space. Right now is a different story, historically. Very difficult to get in there. So that's about it. So can anyone give me an update? Can you stand with Taylor's Lane? Dan, you have something to say? No new update than what we talked about two weeks ago. Okay. But you can see with the documents here, you know, 20 years plus. Yeah. Right? We had a long discussion about the DEC tonight, and uh, we have a lot of a lot of stuff to talk to them about. Well, I saw on the work session that someone got it assigned to Lindsay, I think it is, or something like that. She was responsible from the environmental group. I don't understand about the work session. It wasn't a work session. I saw it listed on the work session. Right near it, Taylor Lane, the name was Lindsay. I, I, I don't remember that call. Oh, okay, that's all right. All right, good enough. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you too, buddy. All right. Uh, next item is order to build. Uh, first item up is 2A resolution authorizing 
uh, budget amendment for funding salary lines in village departments with new, and two new positions. Uh, we talked about this in work session. Uh, one of the things we pointed out, or at least I pointed out in work session, was that we have, uh, for want of a better term, a solid farm team here in the village of uh, folks who are excelling at their job and who have uh, really turned uh, uh, a corner in a lot of ways uh, in uh, running different departments. And uh, we wanna keep people who are doing a good job. And uh, this, this reflects that. Uh, Jerry, would you have anything to add to that? I know, Mayor. Um, what, you're saying, what you're saying is, is um, correct and appreciated. Um, many of these, um, well, there's a couple of the of changes here, or a couple of um, items here that were um, an oversight from, right. um, from the budget know, time. From the budget time, right? And so, so we the media approved, review disclosed that would, we approved the salary, but didn't actually correct. Put it, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. There's one. There's one listed as a retirement payout. Uh, nine thousand three hundred and twenty-eight dollars. That's not a retirement payout. That's uh, unfortunately mislabeled, and I didn't catch it. Uh, it is for uh, out of title pay that he uh, provided uh, before he was promoted last last year. So, gotcha. Okay. Questions or concerns? Need a motion. So moved. Second. Augustino. Trustees Rowling. Yes. Daisy Reed. Yes. Young. Yes. Lucas. No. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. Uh, resolution authorizing budget amendments to fund overtime in various departments. Well, Mayor, there's a second part to that um, mm -hmm. item. About the Arborist and the... Uh... Yeah, there's a 2A2. Do you want to put that for next meeting? No, no, no. We we're going to do it tonight. Yeah. It's 2A-2. Okay, so what we're not doing on this is we're not doing the Arborist right now. Correct. So this is just uh, to hire a planner. It's to fund the position that's already approved for thirty nine thousand seven hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to add the arbors in the next budget. Is that we're going to talk about it during the budget process? Yes. Okay. My fingers are crossed, man. Right now, <laughs> Jerry, I appreciate you. You're uh, and, uh, filling I, that role. And I appreciate that. I, I really do. I can handle it. I can handle until June. Then I'll try some more. Yeah, then I'll try some more. I know. <laughs> so this would be uh, the funding required would be thirty nine thousand seven hundred dollars, <throat> right? At the end of the day, not the fifty eight six twenty five. Thirty nine thousand seven. That's correct. So amending this to take out the uh, arborist. Uh, this is a, a resolution for thirty nine thousand seven hundred dollars to fund the position of planner for the year. I'll make the motion. For the remainder, for the remainder of the year. Yeah, the remainder of the year. Second. Okay. Trustees, Roland? Yes. Geyser Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, OT for various departments. Mm -hmm. This is OT for personnel OT, storm response OT, sanitation OT. Uh, Jerry, what's the sanitation OT, $60,000? Right, so the sanitation OT, and, and unfortunately, I, I wasn't here um, the last two days, so uh, Thursday and Friday, but, but what we've done at um, sanitation is that we've changed the process a little bit in order to help the uh, park department. In the past, uh, previous general foreman and previous supervisor of sanitation would grab as many people as they wanted from the parks department um, to fill in call outs typically on Wednesday at the sanitation department. And Wednesdays are a long day, but Wednesdays are sanitation OT days because they work and then um, they stay on their route. They don't just go home, they stay on until 5 36 o'clock to finish all the, the recycling because it's significant. But the overtime has bulked up significantly because we made a change to allow only two individuals from the parks department to go to sanitation when there are call outs that need to be filled in. In the past, it was typically three, four, five. Uh, so it decimated time. the parks department. It decimated wow. the parks department. And so um, <clears throat> we had an agreement um, with the 
union, the way the contract read, and we had an agreement with the Parks Department and the um, Sanitation Department uh, to, um, to have the employees uh, come in and provide overtime, basically stay later, instead of having the additional personnel from the Parks Department. What I wanna do is I wanna take um, um, 8160, 0140 uh, off of this off of this uh, uh, resolution um, and bring it back to you in two weeks because we may be a little long on snow overtime that I want to analyze. I want to see. So we'll have a surplus of snow. Overtime. Correct. So I want to see what we spent last year up to this point yeah. in snow overtime and be able to move that money over um, so that there's just a shift from one account to the other. And that happens to be at a general point. Right. So so. I respectfully request that this be reduced to $8,672.58. Question. <clears throat> um, what I know that we're in towards the end of January, but if um, we so happen to have <clears throat> a really bad February and March, would that affect us with whatever money you're about to have? Right. So we can always add over time, like mm -hmm. we're doing now, if we need to. But my, what I wasn't able to do, Leilani, last week, because I wasn't here every day, was to take a look at and be comfortable with what we spent last year in overtime up to this date and not touch the rest of it. If that formula or that, uh, um, <clears throat> if that doesn't work out for us, then we can always come back in March and say, hey, we're, we're short on overtime, mayor and board, we need you to add more overtime. But as far as this 60 right now, um, I think we have another area where we can grab it from. I just don't have it ready for tonight. Respect, you know, respect. Thank you. And and based on following up on what Ellen Houtman had said, um, you know, you can't always predict overtime, but mm -hmm. are, but um, does this give any more information for predicting it to the next year or or not? Or it does. Okay. It does because. Um, Effectively, we're, we're much more effective at the Parks Department by not decimating them every Wednesday or other days. It's not just Wednesday, but Wednesday is typically the example. Mm -hmm. um, and so it may require us to add some additional either overtime or personnel, but it's good to add overtime because we don't have the, the fringe benefit costs and the associated costs with the new employees. Um, this is also attributed to the food scrap recycle. Yeah. Right. So right now, food scrap recycling is a non-revenue service. Mm -hmm. I will be presenting to the board at budget time a revenue item for food scrap recycling if individuals still want to continue with food scrap recycling. We have 310 customers uh, in food scrap recycling. And what this does is those two individuals that do food scrap recycling from the Department of Public Works on um, Wednesdays are not available to go jump on the sanitation mm -hmm. trucks to help the sanitation employees start During a business day. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there was a little bit of a <clears throat> we tried to pilot and work in some some new initiatives which are working well, but we may need to start to charge for that initiative in the future. Yeah. Just like other municipalities do. Well you thought you would anyway. I mean we would have to, to yeah. Be. Yeah. I thought recycle was going to get easier after people stopped buying newspapers, but it, it, I don't think. Yeah, no. Would Amazon killed it? Um, the, the boxes, yeah. the boxes, and and uh, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, and and the bottle bill doesn't. Right. Everyone's throwing this away, and nobody's nobody's returning bottles. Nobody. I do. Yeah, um, I know. It's, it's just it doesn't happen. Okay, so this we now amending this to eight thousand six hundred seventy-two dollars just for storm response OT. And personnel OT. Right. And I'll bring back a, a, a fresh resolution to take a look at that analysis to shift from one overtime to the other. You need a motion? So moved. Second. Walden, please. <coughs> Trustees Rollins? Yes. Guys, Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Just do one follow up on recycling. Just have a question. Um, so would it be better to pick up the food scraps on a day other than Wednesday or not? We talked about that. Okay. Right now we've conditioned everybody to be out there on Wednesdays. Yeah. You're gonna have to take a look at that and change that. And um, I waited until James became the actual DPW foreman uh, before we started talking about that. But yeah, we, got, we have discussed that. Splitting it actually in two days, two zones, two days. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. We track it the Monday, we pick it up on a Monday, we track it. 
So please say you pick it up on a Tuesday, you put it out with the trash or you throw the and that would make it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Uh, first, uh, the next item is order of manual vouchers. And uh, manual vouchers are basically phone bills and they come to $1,772.26. And I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. Augie. Trustee Rollins. Yes. Trustee Yazzie Reed. Yes. Trustee Young. Yes. Trustee Lucas. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh, the abstract of ordered vouchers and tonight's grand total is $1,441,018.76. Questions or concerns? Mm -hmm. Can I need a motion? Motion. Second. Orgy, please. Trustees Rawlings? Yes. Guys of Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Um, please hand this down to Mr. Fusker. Three A dog park update. Well, tonight will be the last dog park update. Uh, okay. First item on the dog park update is three A the consistency. This went to Harbor Coastal Zone Management Commission, and I'd like to thank them uh, for looking at this both in a work session and in a regular meeting on an expedited basis. Uh, and uh, they, they, they put a lot of thought into it and uh, I appreciate their work. And they have uh, opined that in their opinion, because they can only offer the village uh, board of trustees opinions, in their opinion, that it would be consistent with uh, the LWRP. So I wanna thank them for that. There is a resolution uh, where we incorporated uh, some of their uh, verbiage. And this resolution is the first thing we have to adopt tonight, uh, that we're making a consistency determination that this is consistent with the LWRP. Uh, anybody have any comments or concerns? No, and I, I echo your, uh... Your praise of the uh, of the commission, uh, Chairman Burke was uh, was uh, very very uh, cooperative. We uh, I need a motion. So moved. moved. Second. Hold. Trustees, rolling. Yes. Guys, you read. Yes. Young. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Mayor Murphy. I just want to say that they the you know they they did qualify it with. With the proviso that we not build shade, you know, um, shade structures and stick with the fence that we had recommended. So I'm assuming that the that we aren't going to be making changes to it without going back to HCD. But yes, aye. Uh, resolution for secret determination of the dog park at Harbor Island Park. Uh, this calls it an unlisted action, and the Board of Trustees has applied the criteria of 6NYCRR6177, considered all the relevant documentation and information submitted, and has determined that this activity will not have a significant impact upon the environment. So that's the secret determined state environment equality review. All right, move, move to adopt. In a second. Second. Augustino. Trustees Rollings. Yes. Guys, you read. Oh, yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. <laughs> Resol <laughs> Resolution uh, Supplemental Appropriation to Construct a Dog Park. Jerry, uh, I've been informed that this is a, a long number. Yeah, Mayor. Uh, and the 115 number, there was $20,000 for uh, a design plan uh, provided to us by our uh, consulting engineer, which we do not need. Uh, so. The actual um, amount of this resolution should reflect ninety-five thousand dollars. Oh wow! All right, I'm in the money. <laughs> okay, um, so this is a resolution to pay for the dog park uh, that the, the village will be building uh, next to the sewage treatment plant, and it's ninety-five thousand dollars. And I will happily make the motion. Second. Mr. Fusco, please. Trustees Rollings. Yes. Geyser Reed. Yes. Young. Yes. Lucas. 
No, because I, I don't. I don't think it's the right location, and um, I appreciate all the effort that everybody's made to go through it. And I appreciate, especially HCZM and their consistency determination and the ad hoc committee for looking at sites. But I'm still not convinced this is the best site. So, no. Mayor Murphy, oh, I, I appreciate all the work that the ad hoc dog committee went through, and I, I realized that they couldn't find a more appropriate site. Uh, the community has been waiting over 20 years uh, for something like this to happen. And while it, it may be imperfect, it is the best uh, choice that we have. And sometimes you can't let perfect be the enemy of the good. So I vote yes. Jerry, how long, when, what, what's the timeline now from here for us? You, I'll send the board an email about uh, what the, um, <laughs> What the expected time frame is to receive the materials tomorrow. Okay, right. thank you. And, and before it's constructed, we we are going to need to um, deal with the rules, hours, uh, access, uh, fines for violations, enforcement, all that stuff. Um, uh, I have a template for that. So okay, great. My second dog park. And and okay. <laughs> will that stuff come out um, to the um, to the public before it's built or? Rules? Or it's over. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we need. We need. To, we need to approve those, right? Yeah. You'll, you'll, yeah. You'll be comfortable with them. Okay. Good. Good. And uh, uh, the question about uh, who? Well, all right. We'll, we'll talk about it when it comes up. Never mind. I will have to amend fees. Um, there'll be an additional fee to the dog license. Mm -hmm. Because right. there are costs associated. There's a key fob that will be distributed. It won't be included with the uh, with, with the. Uh... It, it can be, or it can be included. There's a there's a, there's a six to eight dollar key fob <laughs> that would be included with your dog with your dog license. Mm -hmm. So I want to at least ask you to cover those costs. What about uh, what about non-residents who uh, wish to purchase a uh, a pass to use the dog park? Is that possible? It depends on the board if you want to have a non-resident fee. I mean, I know at at, uh, at uh, Ward Acres that you can go down to uh, you know, to uh, you know uh, New Rochelle City Hall and get a permit to use Ward Acres. I mean that we have non-resident fees for a lot of other things as well. Okay, usually for recreation programs. Yeah, I know yeah. for like the camp, there's resident and non-resident fees. Boat, boat slips, a lot of things like that. Okay, I, it, that people have asked about that. People who yeah. who don't live in the village who are, are interested in our dog walk. Yeah, we, we would need so there'd be a registration process, process and we would need their dog license in order for them to utilize their car. Could we require them to get a dog license? Not from us. Uh, not from us, they okay. Get a dog license from their municipality. Got it, understood. But we would require proof of that in okay. order for us to utilize, to allow them to do it. No one, in, no one using the park should should uh, use the park or bring a dog that's not licensed to the park. What about, wait, what about enforcement? What do we do? What happens if we're, how are we monitoring to make sure that people who are paid for the fob are getting into the park. You're not we're going to be able to, except you can, the key fob, uh, the device or the lock mm -hmm. that you use to get into the dog has monitoring. Uh, so you can kind of keep trend. You can look at trends to see, see when that individual, right? You know, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I think it was a long uh, climb and we finally got there. Uh, the resolution uh, for wireless telecommunications is being held. We're waiting for more information. Is that right, uh, Dan? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Dan. We're we'll staying on top of it. I know it's not a not an easy task. Not popular. Uh, item 4A, new business. Resolution dedicating Rockland, Rock, Rockland Pocket Park. Are we asking for um, comments? Yeah, the people can comment on it. Does anyone want to comment? I'm just asking. <laughs> uh, okay, let me just go for a uh, resolution dedicating Rockland Pocket Preserve a Village Park. Uh, this is a lovely piece of property uh, that the Committee for the Environment, for lack of a better word, rescued uh, from neglect. Uh, the village owns it. it it's on uh, Rockland. It's not Waverly. What is it? Uh, Fayette. Right, yeah. Rockland and Fayette. It's a sloping piece of property. It slopes down uh, from Rockland to the river uh, through a lot of backbreaking labor of many, many volunteers over a few weekends. Uh, they cleared the property. Uh, it's now being replanted. There was some help from uh, 
villaging with Maronic uh, DPW to remove some of the more heavy stuff that uh, needed a that needed a few stout fellows and a pickup truck uh, to load on, right? And uh, it, it's really just a, a gorgeous idea. It, it, it's it's going to enhance that community. It's uh, you know it was built with the intent of uh, uh, providing a habitat for monarch butterflies and uh, different uh, other species that are endangered. And it just shows you what a few people who are very determined uh, can do. And I want to thank the committee for the environment. And I especially want to thank uh, Kate DeHaze, uh, who was really the, uh, the inspiration behind us and the driving force behind us. And um, uh, my one, only question is, uh, Bob, is designating this a park, does it preclude us from using any of that uh, area for flood mitigation if we, if we feel we need to? Depends what the flood mitigation is, but I think you guys probably know. Mm -hmm. you, you can't you know, oh. that's all. use the other one. Uh, it, it says it's worth you, um, If you wanted to build a structure there, mm -hmm. you might have an issue. Mm -hmm. But if you just use it, it's like overflow for water or something like that, you would buy it. Okay, and the issue would be is it something we could overcome if we need be? And not, not, not that I anticipated. I don't think if the village is using it, I think it would be fine. Okay. For right. a purpose. If you ever wanted to do anything commercial there, that would require yeah, no. the approval of the state legislature. It's right up against the bridge, is why. Yeah. So it, there may be, there could, whatever. Yeah, I think that would be fine. Okay, great. I'm, I'm, I just want to make sure. Um, I know Liam is here for, to talk about it. Liam, would you like, uh, Liam is a member of the, uh, you don't have to talk if you don't want to, but. <laughs> no, I'm a member of the committee for the wall. So the folks at home can be here. <laughs> Just give us your name and address. Uh, Liam Robert Hagen, Sylvan Lane. Uh, I'm a member of the Committee for the Environment. Sure. Um, and as I think the mayor as well summarized, um, there's a lot of person hours have gone, volunteer hours have gone into rehabilitating the site. We've already put in 300 or 600 plants, there's another 600 to go. The tree committee has been involved in yep. selecting trees. Um, and it was, you know, it was a terrible overgrown sort of eyesore. useless eyesore before um, Kate uh, led the charge to get it rehabilitated. So I think the committee for the environment has formally requested that the board make this a park. Um, I think our concern is that by doing that, it will sort of give it elevated status, mm -hmm. ongoing maintenance, and things like that. So mm -hmm. I think the chief concern is we don't want all this work just to sort of then sure. be overgrown in 10 or 20 years. It'll be now under the care of the uh, Parks Department. Yeah. And the, in in and whom we have a lot of faith. Jerry and the village have been very helpful in, in getting this, yeah. in supporting this project. So yeah. we thank them. Yeah. They're coming along nicely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. It'll, it'll be a nice place to spend the lunch hour once spring gets here. That's great. Wait until I ask you for a horticulturist. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like a motion, please. Second. Second. <clears throat> what was it? Rawlings? Yes. Geyser Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yeah, before I vote. Could you look for me in the next week or two and see when the last time the village of Amaranic dedicated park? That's what I was going to ask. Yes. And uh, but I vote yes. Yeah. That 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 that's something worth noting. I, I'll bet you it's been many years. I bet you it predates all of us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. I'm going to the park. Okay, four B. Uh, ele election cycles and term change limits. So what this is, what this would be doing, we're scheduling a public hearing, and just letting you know, this you know this law would be extending uh, the terms of office for the members of the board of trustees uh, from two year terms to four year terms, and those terms would be held biannually. The elections will be held biannually in even numbered years. 
So what that means is that this year is, is an odd number year. So the election this year would then be for a three year term. That's correct, man. If we pass this law and this law goes into effect, yes. that election would then be for a three year term, which would be what? That would be the 26th. Right. 26, 2026 right. would be when that term would terminate. Yeah. Okay. And then the trustees elected in 24 would not be up for election until 2028. 2028. Yeah. And then, so there would be three trustees in the presidential year. And in the gubernatorial year, there would be a mayor and a trustee. Yeah. All right. Now that, that's the current structure. The, the, the intent of the law is not to extend the terms. I mean, that's not what we, we began with. The intent of the law was to was to have to eliminate all yes. fewer elections. No, 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 no. no I'm, I'm just I'm just yeah. talking about there's there's, a, a, there's method to my means. Yeah. Uh, but but I just you know it it, it is you know if I decide to run for mayor this year, uh, that would be a three year term, and I just want to. Before I even vote on this, I want to put it out there that that would be, I don't believe in term limits, but that would be my last term. I, I don't believe that anyone should do it for more than eight years. Uh, so that would be, I, I could promise the public that, that this isn't about keeping me in office in perpetuity, which is kind of like a, you know, like a Twilight Zone episode, right? You, you can't get out of the, uh, what you wanted. Uh, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a Yonkers thing. <laughs> is that is that considered an inducement to, to sell it, or that uh, no? I you promise I, it'll be your. No, I, I want somebody to say he's trying to stay in office forever. Because and and, and I can say this with you know a, a, a large degree of assurity. This will be my last election in the village of the All right. Uh, but but besides that, I think the purpose behind the law to not have an election every year, uh, especially now since. We've changed our primaries. So you, know, you finish an election, two months later, you're starting to think about, you know, carrying petitions for the next election. I, you know, and it yeah, just yeah. goes on and on and on. And it, it's hard to get anything done because everybody's, you know, worried about, oh, what about this? And you can't do that. And it, it, it just would be so much easier if, if, you know, people had time to learn the job before they're running for the job again. Yeah, uh, and I, I agree because uh, it, it has it, it hasn't stopped once, and um, uh, since since I I was introduced to this uh, this this uh, thing <laughs> by, by the mayor, I mean it's been a continuous. There's been an election uh, every moment pending, so um, uh, this is a good government uh, uh, proposal that was brought to us by the uh, by the good students so over at. Uh, Joe Liberti's uh, class. Uh, yeah. What was it going to be? Oprah? Oh, oh, yeah. And, and, and they. Maranek school district. Hmm? Yeah, they specify as the Maranek uh, school district. The Maranek school district, yes. Uh, uh, and and this, this is, uh, they did research. Um, it was originally uh, uh, brought to my attention by a, a district leader, uh, uh, Elsa Rubin, who, who said, look at this. I saw the proposal online when I first became a trustee. And I said, that makes so much sense. So much sense. It's a way to maximize uh, uh, voter turnout and, and voter engagement. And uh, the uh, the idea of it is to give the voters a clarity on when they when they can vote it and not have this uh, incomprehensible uh, maze of rules and constant elections where people are uh, are are um, you know not sneaking in. But there's a lot. There were a lot of uncontested elections and 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 and, and gamesmanship. And I think this is this is much more democratic. The, uh, the idea of extending the terms is not essential to it, as far as I'm concerned, only insofar is that you don't want your whole government up every two years uh, uh, on the election. Uh, I don't care whether the, uh, the terms are extended or not, but uh, there are a number of ways we could do this uh, uh, that, that would be a little bit different. We could have different terms for the mayor and the trustees. Hmm? We, we, we're, we're approving a, a public hearing on a law that's in front of us. I know, I know, but I just wanted to I just wanted to say it, it, be clear about what this is. That it's not uh, it, it the 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 intention is to uh, is to uh, uh, synchronize the uh, the election cycles. And uh, when we have the public hearing, 
Uh, we'd want to hear comments on all those things. And if we need to change the law and do it again, we will. We can do that. All right. Uh, so uh, I support this now for the public hearing, and would like to hear public's input on it. Can I? Um, sure. Um, I think um, the two-year terms make us more accountable to voters, so I'm not in favor of this. And I also am concerned about shifting to the um, even year elections, which yes, there's higher turnout. Um, the, the students' numbers don't actually show that the higher turnout is um, higher in the districts where there are, there are underrepresented populations, but there's higher turnout throughout. And actually in some of the years, percentage in the different districts goes up. So I think that th that, that's um, they they eliminated some years from their statistics, and I think that was a flaw. But more significant than that, I think we shouldn't be disassociating ourselves with the county elections. We we vote for a county legislator every other year in the odd year, and we vote for a county executive every year, every fourth year in the odd year. And um, the highest turnout we've had in the village in a very long time, except for 2020, when we had an enormous number of absentee ballots because they were sent to everybody was 2017 when we were running and we were pulling for George Latimer. Um, so I'm, I'm concerned about disassociating um, with the county. And I think if we're, go if, if anybody, who, if we're gonna vote for this, I think we shouldn't be benefiting from it. It's, it's, it's self-serving. Any of us who, this is something that people who aren't gonna run again, maybe should propose if they think it's really a good idea, but I think it's self-serving. And um, I make a motion that um, that that we link the expansion of the terms of the board of trustees from two to four years, um, and moving to the biennial elections in even years only to a referenda to be held in November. Um, because I, I really think the voters should be able to make an informed decision. Um, and at this stage, we're we are simply passing this law. It's not subject to mandatory referendum. It's a permissive referendum, which means the residents have to get over 2000 signatures in 30 days after the passage of it to get a refer to get a referendum and i i think this is a significant change in the way the village governs and that it should be done via referendum can i make a comment yeah sure um just in regards to what you were saying i i think people when they do vote they vote and i don't want to assume why people vote but when if it's a if it's a high um, turnout rate is because there's an important um, topic when there's an, there's, an, there's some some kind of importance. When Latimer ran, there was there was a serious divide in our communities, and they mm -hmm. want they wanted to see some type of change that wasn't happening in the years prior under uh, the executive prior to it, Latimer, but personally as a person who ran and if i do, do decide to run again it is every two years it's a lot of wear and tear on your body and at all times if you take this position you should hold yourself accountable because for everything that we do at all times whether i'm here for two years or i'm here for four years or three years i hold myself accountable to this position because i decided that that's what i'm going to do being in this position so i don't I don't, I don't, I personally don't agree, but I understand you have totally have your right to your opinion. And I respect that. Um, but I don't think that I would not, I don't take advantage, nor do I take this as this position lightly. So every day that I do come to represent myself, I'm representing my community at all times. And I think the wear and tear on your body, my body and soul, during election years, having to do every two years, it is a lot. It is a lot. I just want to point out that these three uh, ran on a platform of doing this. Uh, the voters had a chance to evaluate that platform. They had a chance to think about you know, what they would do when they were elected. And they elected them both resoundingly in a primary and handsomely in a general election. So this is part of what they were, they ran on it and I supported them in that and I support them in it now, but this was part of the platform that they ran upon. People run upon platforms and when they win elections, they, the, the public should you know, expect them to implement that platform. 
I mean, just because other people didn't support them in the election doesn't mean that their platform, you know, then goes to the wayside. Uh, there is an opportunity for people if they want to have a special election, they can, they can petition for it. Uh, I, I think that, frankly, you know, we, we had enough resolutions in this uh, village and propositions in this village for a while. But if people want to do that, that's fine. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, I think that this isn't about us. It's about the future of the community. And I don't feel like mm -hmm. this is benefiting us. Mm -hmm. You know, this is just, you know. Any person. This, this, is, this is for perpetuity. So. I don't know, uh, Manny, do you want a chance to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, like I, like, like you stated before, like we kind of ran on the supporters when they went and checked the, the people they wanted to represent their community on the ballot. They picked us. They, they knew this about this. They knew that we, you know, we understood what the students came and presented as, you know, I wasn't on the board. They came and presented to me the president as a village of America district leader. So I did see, we did see this in, ahead of the time. And I thought it was a great idea because I don't think we should have elections every year. I think that's just insane. We, we see in those odd years as what they presented, the turnout is tremendously lower than what it would be on, a, on an even year. And I just think that it, that just shows that it's okay for us to kind of go and make this change and make them on even years. We want people to turn out. We want people to go out there and get the chance to vote and ch uh, choose who they want to represent their community instead of on odd years when they're not really thinking about it because the only thing that are on there are kind of these small little local elections. So I think it's really important that we do kind of move forward with this. The term limit, I think it's very hard. A lot of people know government moves slow to think you can get something done in two years when halfway through your, you know, your first year, you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have to run again. So I can hopefully be able to move forward with the things that I kind of got started. So to me, it's very exciting to think about, you know, changing that, not even just for myself if I choose to run again, but for people in the future who want to re represent their community and know that they will have the time to kind of Push up, push something forward that they believe in, and actually get it done. Right. I, I think the first two years is all about just learning the ropes. I mean, not, not that you, you can't get stuff done at all, but it's just yeah, it's, it's a it's a lot it's of a job. It's, yeah. a, it's a huge learning curve. Uh, I, I'm, I was fortunate to have a year under my belt before we started this this term, so uh, I appreciate it. And uh, and if I could say, I think I believe the women League of Women Voters has been behind us nationally for a long time. That these the, the synchronized elections. And I did speak to the county executive about it and um, was surprised that he was very supportive. And I invited him to come speak when we uh, when we have our public hearing on the matter. Um, uh, he says, you have elections every year now? I said, yeah. Well, it's it's, it's kind of crazy. You know, and, crazy. And you know what? So, and, and I know George was one of the proponents of moving the New York State primary to be in sync yes. with the, the federal primary. So the, yeah, this, so this is very much in in his uh, in his wheelhouse. Not, you know, I listen. I, I get that there's a, there's a downside to everything, and I and I and I understand what what Laura's uh, what Laura's saying, but um, I don't think that uh, that uh, that making it simpler for the uh, that that any of that trumps making it simpler for the voters. That's it. I, I agree. That makes it tremendously simpler for the voters, and I think that every year they have to go to a, they have to go out and vote. I think it, if they know that they go and vote for. It's it's a you know a presidential year or you know a midterm year. They're 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 already going to vote. I think it makes it easier to kind of go and take that extra step and look a little further down the ballot and see your local kind of representatives. But I want I want to hear what people have to say about it in the public hearing. But I would like to add, we do have elections every year, and we will continue to have elections every year. Because in the odd years, we will be voting for our elected officials in the towns of Rye and Marinac and our county executive. In Unless they follow the leader. Huh? They, they have. They are. They. I do. <laughs> not think so, but the, the other part of this is that it's it's the people who will be holding this seat, and the most like to me, if you and you've been through it because you've been a trustee, and any person who has ran for a position, and you know what it what what's not what's easier is if you go unopposed, but when you're running against other people. It is hard. I, I it is very that. hard. I, 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 and especially if you make it past the primaries, and then you uh, you have to get into the general like the uh, November elections. It's a lot of wear and tear, mind, body, and so on. Then you have to jump into the seat. So you have to. We have to be mindful of the whole process, regardless if you go unopposed or you you, you um or you you have opposition. So it's not just about 
whether it is a part of that is part of it the that we do have elections every year but there's other parts to it there's definitely other parts to it so i i think we can schedule this public hearing yeah bring so it to the public make, so i'm gonna make the motion I move to schedule the public hearing uh, um, on the, uh, the law as written. Second. Augustino. Trustees, Rawlings? Yes. Yaisa Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? No. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Aye. Say anything? What's the date of the public hearing? Oh, I'm sorry. The date of this public hearing will be the, I believe, February 13th. But I'll check. I think it is. Yes, it is February 13th. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, resolution accepting changes to the BOT procedures. Uh, we talked about this in work session. Um, not, not this week, Last two week. weeks ago. Uh, Changing, we, we changed the time to eight o'clock. Uh, we took out uh, add any additional work session to add any meeting. Uh, and we took out uh, the adoption of the, the agenda from the meeting procedures or from the agenda, actually. Uh, I think that's what we did. I, and I think in the first paragraph, instead of deleting an additional work session, we should just say the Board of Trustees may add additional meetings. May add meetings each month that the Board of Trustees determine is necessary. Okay, I just... And isn't it covered? Maybe, and no, I think, it's, all right. All right. Any questions, concerns? I'll make the motion and we adopt the new meeting procedures. Second. Augustino. Trustee is rolling? Yes. Desiree Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, 4D, Department of Justice Funds for Body Cares. Uh, this is something that came out of the uh, reinvention of the police uh, committee uh, that our officers are now going to be wearing body cameras. Uh, anybody want to explain it a little more thoroughly? The, um, the, the, the city chief working with uh, New York State contract vendors to identify a preferred model for the body one camera being a Motorola B300. In the fiscal year 22 23 budget, the board provided appropriation of uh, $70,000. Uh, the grant that the police department received, the village received, was eighty-four thousand uh, dollars. It's a five-year lease program for the body-worn cameras. Uh, between the cost of the camera, the vehicular access, and maintenance fees, uh, the five-year total is one hundred sixty-five thousand six hundred ninety dollars. What the uh, what we're requesting is the establishment of a capital account uh, in which we can appropriate monies for the village match. This is a reimbursable grant, so we have to spend the money first to get, get reimbursed. Mm -hmm. uh, transfer uh, $70,000. Uh, so we're asking for $95,000 from surplus, $84,000 of which will be reimbursed over the course of time, and the existing appropriation of $70,000 be transferred to that same capital account. That way we'll have one purchase order that we can draw down on for the next several years. Okay. Now, the utility of these cameras is A, uh, <clears throat> to, hold, uh, to hold the police you know, actions accountable, but it's also uh, has the, of uh, protecting the police from uh, unfounded charges. If somebody's saying the police did something that they didn't do yet, we can go right to the videotape. Uh, and you know, in this day and age, it's uh, it, you know, since everybody has a camera anyway, uh, ubiquitously on their person, you know, in the form of uh, these phones, it's just uh, a, a, an easier way to document uh, you know stops and uh, if, if there's an arrest or if there's uh, someone who needs to be identified, 
uh, you know, let's just say from an engagement with the police, it just helps everybody. I think it helps the police, it helps uh, protect the public, and it helps uh, give more transparency to the whole process. So I really wanna thank the uh, committee the, that recommended this. I thank the police chief for her you know, hard working to get it. I thank our police officers for being open to you know, some change and some uh, you know, uh, innovation as they always have been and to improve the safety of our residents. And I think it's a good uh, change overall for everybody. So I would be happy to make the motion. Second. <laughs> Mr. Pusco. Trustees Rawlings? Yes. Yazza Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, wait, wait, before, we, before you go, one question. When does this program get implemented? So now it's been, but when would this begin? Like, do we have to order the equipment? How long does that take? What, what date? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Does that have a backup? Uh, I don't believe so. I didn't see it. I didn't see yeah. day delivery, potentially. Yeah, we, we can get that information. All right. we can get that. I mean, there's delivery, then there's setting up, there's the IT portion of it. Thank you. So in, in 2023. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's basically what I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yes, yeah. we can follow up tomorrow. Yeah. But, yeah. We would expect that. Yeah, I'll just. I will email the team right now and ask her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, resolution authorizing the village manager to establish the leave the leaves program. So this this is something that came out of. Like, Elizabeth, leave it open a little, please. So it, it, because it locks. Thank you. Uh, okay. The. The Committee for the Environment uh, came and uh, presented a, a bunch of initiatives. And this one was the Leave the Leaves program. Uh, so you know, to either mulch into your the leaves into your lawn or create beds uh, where beds exist to leave the leaves in the beds so that little creatures can have uh, places to have habitat. And Jerry, you were going to start implementing this on village property? Correct. So we can provide a demonstration to the public. And we'll do that. Uh, um, you know, this coming fall, okay. several months from now. So I want to thank again the Committee for the Environment, who has been really on the cutting edge around here. And uh, uh, there, there was a, a DPW, um, not a DPW, but a, a um, uh, public information uh, aspect of this uh, that was requested by the committee. That would happen also? It will create that. Okay. Okay. Anybody want to make a motion? So moved. Second. Paul. Trustees Rawlings? Yes. Guys you read? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution authorizing dates for the Fireman's Carnival. Okay. Makes me feel warmer just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they will need access to the park from June 19th to July 6th. Uh, the Carnival is going to be going from uh, June 27th to July 5th, which is a little shorter this year. Than last year. Mercifully, yeah. yeah. It's kind of going back to the way it was. Uh, okay. Let's see. What I, any questions or concerns? No. no. Fireworks are on July 4th with the rain date July 5th. And the parade's 27th. Parade's 27th. Yeah. So that's no. the way I used to remember. You used to march down and enter the carnival. Enter yeah. the carnival, and the carnival would just be open. That's yeah. the way. I remember it like means watch the carnival. Like that. Well, yeah. It wasn't like that last year. No, no, because they because they, 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 they were making up for a long beginning. time. So, and I think it was exhausting. Oh. Yeah, it used to be you you march First down and bang the carnival is open. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I'll make that motion. Second, almost there. Trustees Rawlings. Yes. Did you read? Yes. Young. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh, G resolution uh, certifying FYE fiscal year 2022 unpaid village taxes. Uh, all these are people who did not pay their taxes in time. That is correct. <laughs> and we are now going to sell. Authorize me to sell these liens. And we also send out advisement uh, letting everybody know that your taxes are unpaid and it will be going out to lien in March. So it gives them an opportunity to make Absolutely. things right before we sell we make the every lien. effort to reach the residents. Yeah. We'll let them know. Thanks, Augie. All right. You need a uh, motion? So moved. 
I need a second. Second. I need a call. Trustees Rawlings? Yes. Yazir Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution accepting uh, the Westchester Joint Water Works projects. I have to do these one at a time. Uh, first project is the purchase boost to pump station modification and related PRV upgrades, phase two as a joint capital project. Um, this project was approved before uh, because of the cost of materials and uh, job site conditions. It's gonna cost the village uh, a little bit more. Uh, I believe this is 40, about 56, $57,000 more for this one. So I need a motion on that. So moved. Second. Wongi. Trustees Rollings? Yes. Yes, you read? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next is another capital project, which is the general waterworks, replacement of 425 feet of damage and leaking transit water main on Brevort Lane, uh, just outside the Westchester Joint Waterworks District. Uh, this is a section of the city of Rye that the Westchester Joint Waterworks provides uh, water to. Uh, it's transit pipe, and transit pipe is pipe that was made with asbestos. So usually when there's a break in a pipe, what they do is they isolate the break. Maybe they go 10 feet in this direction, 10 feet in that direction, cut out that section of pipe and put in like a new cast iron pipe. But when it's transite pipe with the asbestos in it, the uh, Department of Health makes you take out the whole run because they want to get rid of the asbestos pipe throughout the whole system. So instead of just fixing that one spot, they want you to replace that whole line. So consequently, when this happens, it, it's, it's a bigger repair. Uh, so that's what happened in the city of Rye. So how we recoup the money is you know, the, the three municipalities lay out the money uh, and then we reflect that in what we charge for water from those customers in Rye. So we recoup the money over time, but this is just part of you know, the cost of doing business. All right. Uh, anybody have any questions or concerns? Mm -mm. Uh, I need a motion. So moved. Second. It's not my night. It's not my night. Okay, we have two motions, two seconds. That's We're good. Belts and suspenders. <laughs> I missed one. Uh, roll roll. Trustee. Is it rolling? Yes. Guys, you read? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Resolution authorizing a budget transfer for FEMA funded stormwater repair. Chair. I know you, this is one of your favorites. Yeah, Mayor, due to Hurricane Ida, um, there, of course, everyone knows there's a lot of severe flooding and damage, but what a lot of people don't know is that um, there was a lot of impact and damage to our infrastructure under the pavement um, where people can't see. And uh, this is one of those areas, it's, uh, it's the dead end of Jefferson, um, where uh, Wood and, and Harold Street are um, going all the way to Grove. And uh, this is $105,190 for design uh, and engineering services to prepare uh, construction plans and to bid classifications to go out to bid to repair that section, uh, which would be covered by FEMA. Earlier today, um, I sent the board an email updating everyone. And out of the $2.5 million estimated um, infrastructure damage, this is one of those areas that could be uh, well, well up to a million dollars. But it's reimbursable. It's reimbursable. Uh, yeah, the, the engineer explained to me the, uh, the kind of the way that this area kind of, I, I guess, if you want a better term, uh, you know, falsely evolved with, with all the uh, building that went on over the years. And Correct. Going through people's yards and out the backyard. And, yeah. yeah, certain sections of the community were less engineered than others. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but, Depending. but but when we had the when we had the severe flooding and, and the storm and, and the surges and the drainage, this this area got impacted pretty hard. So yeah, it was, and this was where precisely? Um, right the Harrison side, right next the Harrison border of uh, the okay, village, yeah. Grove, Jefferson, and, and those those two. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of weird stuff there. So 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 this area there, um, while there was you know less than adequate engineering when they started putting these lines in. Um, there was significant damage there 
because of that lack of engineering. And so there's a section of this drainage that's that's missing. Yeah. That's about 300 feet long. And there's, right there's a lot of, as you explained it to me, there's a lot of 90s in Correct. the pipes. So 90s in the pipes restrict the flow and they allow silt to build up in the pipes. It, it, was, a, it was almost like the worst way to do it. Mm -hmm. it was, everybody who built the house built their own and then they tied it in. Mm -hmm. it just it was, it was the Rube Goldberg. Yeah. So, so this is for this is for uh, this would not be for our engineer. This would be for a consulting engineer. All reimbursable by um, from FEMA. Not only is the design uh, and engineering services reimbursable, but but the construction costs would be reimbursable as well. Okay. Thank you. I need a motion. I'll move. Second. Mm, that's I was struggling tonight. <laughs> My Lani got it. You know, it, I, I'll just tell you something. It's a pleasure to have four members of the board who are all willing to make motions in seconds. It, it, make, it makes things a little easier. Uh, all the roll. roll. Trustees Rawlings? Yes. Geyser yes. Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, communication to the board round two. <laughs> I call. Well, again. Um, so Manny and I sat on an ad hoc committee, yeah, tennis back in the day, and Kelly was liaison. And uh, question I have is, I think the contract's probably coming up soon, and we're we negotiating with Claude again, and because I would love to see the youth center there. You know, we've been talking about it for years, Tom, for our kids back in the day. You know, um, so I would love to get a dialogue going or know what the uh, dialogue is currently. Because Claude, whether or not he's going to be up, or we can take it over, if we need space. I also sit on the rec committee as well. Manny sits on it as well. So I think it's long overdue. Uh, my kids are well, have kids, they're young adults. We aged up. You know the deal. Yeah. So we've been talking. But I got another generation. Right, right. Hopefully, we've built before they become teenagers. Probably the streets. Then we talked about the spray ground when we were young, and oh, our, our kids could play that, and now my grandkids would play. Yeah. And we need to talk about that because we should double it because that's the plan was back in the day and we cut it in half. So, any update on sports time or what we're doing? I haven't started negotiating with sports so time. Um, bring up shortly, Jerry. I'm trying to I got to check, Carla, because I can't, no, I can't I recall unless Dan, unless Dan can recall. I, I can't recall the last time we had a we had a two year. I remember that, but I can't recall when that when that was yeah. in effect. Yeah, because yeah, you don't remember, right? No, no. too many remember. things to remember. I yeah. Know. No, but it's important. And mm -hmm. I mean, I know we make money out of it. I know it's going down the revenue and so forth. Actually, it's went up this year. It went up significantly this year. Really? They had a banner year. Okay, good. Everyone, we went for everyone. And we, you know, we take our big off the top, so yeah. it's a little different. <laughs> our, <laughs> our arrangements are a little different. But, but, but if if I'll I'll look and and, and see what the board wants us to do. Yeah. So we spoke about air structures and all that, but you know, it's, it's, think about community center. From a Maronic similar to what Harrison, Eastchester, Scarsdale, I can go on and on. All of them have Mount Vernon or Shell. So, Jerry, hopefully we don't miss, miss the boat this time. Uh, the pier. <laughs> <laughs> so the only, the last conversation I had with the commissioner regarding the pier is that he was thrilled that there's a dog park now because he can blame the smell on the dog park and not on the sewer plant. Uh, but other than that, uh, he has not given me an actual date, but I can share with the board, if they want to, the actual layout plan of the uh, of the mobilization and what they're going to be using. Yes, huh? Thank you. Yes. Share that. I will, yeah, I'll share yeah, that. I got that from the where the, the, uh, the tower is missing. All along yeah, the whole there. stretch there. Yeah. yeah, so we'll put a shovel on the ground, hopefully, within the next six months. I hope so. Oh, yeah, six months? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, six right. months is a good buffer. <laughs> well, I'll be back in three to five years to talk about that. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Stay well, guys. I'll get you guys there. Okay. Uh, report from the village manager. Uh, Mayor, nothing um, for me to report except that we may get our first actual. Um, significant winter weather uh, this week. So I just ask everyone to be diligent and to be respectful of the fact that we are a very compact community 
Uh, and when we have to move snow, it could be uh, it could be a little tricky and treacherous. But uh, I have a lot of faith in our guys and ladies uh, who are out there uh, helping uh, keep the village clean. So, but that's about it. Thank you, Derek. Yep. Can, can we ask that maybe for the next meeting you talk a little bit about like flooding mitigation, you know, status? Sure. Under my under my report. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I'll I'll give everyone an update about. The agencies I talked to, the information that I provided, shared with the assembly and, and the senator, and all those things. I'll Thank do that. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Okay. Uh, report from the village, uh, Clerk Treasurer. Yes, may I receive the resignation from a committee for the environment member, Tim Whitney? That is all, Mayor. Thank you. Report from the village manager. Hey, Is that already? I'm sorry, report from the village attorney. Uh, Mayor, two local laws have been accepted for filing by the Secretary of State. The first is local law number six, which is the change in the village speed limit. And the second is local law number seven, which was the senior citizen and disabled persons tax exemption. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, minutes, commissions, boards, and committees. Minutes of the Board of Trustees work session regular meeting of January 9th, 2023. Minutes of the Board of Traffic Commissioners meeting of December 13th, 2022. Minutes of the Committee for the Environment meeting of December 19th, 2022. Minutes of the Tree Committee meeting of October 17th and December 19th, 2022. All right, that brings us to the end of our program. Thank you for uh, sounds on your phone. Uh, just it, 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 as Jerry pointed out, uh, if we do get some inclement weather, really the only way to learn how to drive into snow, the, the trick is you just drive a lot slower. That's right. That's the there, there's nothing else to it. You just drive slow and you take your time. And uh, you get there when you get there. And if you don't have to drive, don't drive. Uh, thank you all. And I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All, <laughs> all in favor. All right. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good. All right. Nine eighteen. I'm impressed. 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 I'